what I don't like is exactly what he said. He could have been known as this. That is exactly how we tear our people down. Y'all can't wait to find out something about somebody successful. So when we ever we talk about them being successful, y'all want to talk about that. Facts. Think about this as an example of it. You got certain niggas, when we start talking about Martin Luther King, what they going to start talking about? He was fucking oh, the well, white you know, he was, yeah. you know, he was fucky. You know, he, uh -huh. he fucked everybody. Who gives a fuck? Right. Your black ass can walk into the Shake Shack without getting smacked upside the head because of this motherfucker's dream. Low key. Who gives a fuck what woman... I'm sorry, this is me with sucking yeah. that upset. <laughs> Who So 171 is a special episode. One plus seven plus one. I think you can put that math together. Turn up, man. Happy Friday. <laughs> we going up. Hey. Nance is the most reachingest nigga ever, I swear. It's not a nine. One plus seven a nine plus one? is a nine, but like Terrence will be like, oh, you see that, bro? The last four digits of his phone number was three seven six one. Three seven six one ten six one seventeen. And that should add up to a nine. Minus eight. It's like, all right. <laughs> this is the thing. 171 divided by nine is 19. Okay. So it, it's a literal, it's a literal nine thing. I give I give you that. Mm -hmm. I give it to him. Mm -hmm. It's a special day. What's what's up 19? Is it the 19th that this is dropping on? COVID 19 out here, boy. Okay, yeah. Need to be careful. Um, but happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday, happy Friday. You know. Hopefully everybody's enjoyed their week. There's been a whole mm -hmm. lot of discourse. Everybody's been talking about. You know, it's it's been a big discourse week, especially I think because of uh the Drake album, which we'll talk. Anything uh interesting happening in your week? Uh interesting happening in the week. Shout out to everybody that subscribed to the OG Mallory Bros page because we got the uh the vlogs going up. It's good to put a vlog up. By the time y'all are seeing this, you probably have seen the new vlog. Um subscribe to that channel, man. Go subscribe. We planning on I like the plans that we have for that channel. Uh, when it comes to like vlogs, is vlogs is one of the primary things that we want to put over there. It's like the most not yet genuine content that we can make. We legit trying you know? to make movies too. We trying to make like, them joints. It's very, real. Yeah. It's very. They're very entertaining to say the least. And to let y'all know, we don't really get paid from those vlogs. Like people think that you're getting paid. And it ain't about what you're getting paid for. It's just when y'all see those, just know that it's something that we making out of the, the pure. It's it's real pure. It's not like. Oh, we doing this because we getting money for it or something like that. Nah, you know, yeah. people had those thoughts and we're not doing it like that. Yeah. But not. I think the biggest part, this is something that is definitely just for them. And that's one of the, the most primary things we started with those. So turn up. Because that gives y'all some fact. insight to our lives. Some of the shit we talk about on here, mm -hmm. you can see it on there. We talked about my sister's wedding on here. And a yep. lot of that vlog had my sister's wedding in it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. My I got my shit coming right after, right after here. So and his shit, his see. Shit is definitely nice. Don't try to he's guess. sitting here dressed like a uh what did I say? What did I tell you? You were dressed like. You told me I was dressed like I was old. You dressed like a brown sugar cinnamon uh, pop tart boy. One of the best. I got some in the cabinet right now. What you dressed up like? First of all, shout out Enoch and Power Cobros to check out. Y'all can't even see his shirt because his mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You bought the girls' joint. Terrell keeps saying that this is a girl shirt, but it said unisex on the joint, so I bought it. I don't give a fuck if this is Hello Kitty. I don't care. This is Hello Enaka. You walking around with Hello Kitty on your chest. Yep, and all the kitties is saying hello. Meanwhile, you walking around looking like a nigga from Red Dead Redemption. You look like the nigga that owned the truck. You look like the nigga that owned the truck. <laughs> Don't you look like a nigga that owned the truck? <laughs> All right, we're going to get right into it. Drake dropped the album on Friday. Shout out to everybody that caught our 8 a.m. in Charlotte video and or got the Patreon and saw the full reaction. 100. If you didn't do that already, it's up there. But it was... An experience. I would say a lot of people are looking for this podcast for us to say what we thought about the album. So I guess I'll ask you first, because you know, you kind of seem like, for the people that saw the reaction, you felt the way in the beginning. Yeah. And then after you sat with it for a minute, now you seem like you love this shit. You, 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 you was throwing the C word around. Classic. 
That and I that's where it's funny because look, I said pump, it was pump, a, pump, pump a break. I said for all the dog was a classic uh on Twitter and I got killed for it. People was like, This is exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> These new fuck niggas. <laughs> and honestly, I'm gonna keep it a hundo. I was trying to tell Terrell, this album is one of those albums that I feel like only a certain person is gonna really appreciate. And y'all know me. I like albums like I Never Liked You. I like albums like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Come on. This shit, this is the shit that I've been fucking with for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, The yeah. Toxic album. I was telling, uh, we said this in the uh, reaction, and I still stand by it. I feel like this was the real her loss. Yeah. It's, it's, it seems like For All The Dogs should be called her loss, and her loss should be called For All The Dogs. Yeah. But my, when I first heard the album, of course, this is what I realized. I'll start here. It really is everybody's expectations versus what you really got. Once you get over what you expected it to be and what you wanted, and you look at what you got, you ain't gonna be mad with it. It's almost like when you get a jersey number. When you remember when you was young, you got a jersey number. You were like, why the fuck did they give me fifty? I wanted eight, like Kobe. Uh-huh. But then after a while, you start embracing what you had. Uh-huh. They start saying, let's go five zero, let's go five zero, bet. Because once you start realizing, all right, bet. What I was expecting was one thing, but what I got is this. Once you start looking at what you got, man, that music is. It's hard for me to point and say, okay, this is a bad song. And if y'all yeah. gonna say that this album's bad, I gotta be able to point here and say, okay, this is a bad song. And no. songs like, shake that ass, bitch. Hands on, on your knees. knees. Yes, sir. It's sexy. It's hard for me to say that's a bad song when I listen to it and I find, I'm, find myself singing it later. Y'all right. are saying some of these songs aren't good, and then later you're singing them. Let's go through it, because you know what? A lot of, I've seen a lot of people go through the uh, track list. Okay, yeah, yeah. And say what songs they like. And I said, you know what? We never do that, but we should. Let's do it. The album started with Virginia Beach, which I think we can agree is probably on the lower end of Drake's. I'm not going to say worse as in it was bad. Because mm-hmm. I don't think it was a bad song. But so far as what Drake does on intros, I think it's kind of on the lower end of the... Nah, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing it just in case I need to hear a song that you say and I don't, you know. Okay, yeah. But Virginia Beach was cool, but I didn't like it as an intro. I think it I was didn't definitely like it one of his lower tier intros. But low key, that's you expecting Drake to have a Drake intro. That's that, that is it. Well, is super- Virginia Beach a bad song? It's not a bad song, but it's not the intro. It's not intro Drake. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah, it ain't. But that's because you're expecting intro Drake. Remember when Kanye started his album with that bullshit? What did he start his album with? Because he's oh look, he started uh he started Jesus with on site. And niggas was not that he's an intro guy, but people were like, what the fuck? It's because your expectation. Go ahead. I just think that normally Drake started the album with like a a state of the union address, per se. Like he's talking. Yeah. Champagne poetry, survival, free smoke, um, Legend was the beginning of, if you're reading. Free you're Smoke saying. wasn't the intro. Free Smoke was the intro. Free Smoke was the intro to More Life? To More Life, yeah. Wow. As a matter of fact, let me fact check. Let me fact check. But uh, Don't I'm, worry, I'm, I got you right here. I'm pretty sure Free Smoke was the intro to More Life. He be where he talked. Free Smoke, yeah. Uh, I re-listened to um, Tuscan Leather. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Anyway, I, I, I don't want to... This is like listening to a nigga talk about his expectations. I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm just saying that I don't think Virginia Beach was. But, but right, let's, right, let's right, keep right. going through the track list. I, I think Ju- Virginia that. Beach is very Dark Lane demo tape to me. It's like a super dark song. If it was on the end of Dark Lane demo tapes, I felt like it would fit. Dark Lane started with... uh, What did Dark Lane start with? She pretty, but ghetto, pretty... Mm. Deep Pockets. Okay. I can see how you would say that. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's like a dark song. I see how you say it. All right, bet. Amen, I didn't like. With the Tizo touch that joint, praying, praying, I didn't like it. It was very Donda-ish to me, and it didn't sound right coming from Drizzy. It was very... I can see if you if were he saying... Did, imagine Drake had a song on Donda for Kanye, where Kanye put a third verse on that. It would have been fire for Donda. I'm sorry. And I know we're saying that because we know that Donda is the religion album, but come on, can you, can you not hear Kanye West on this? Maybe I'm tripping. Yeah, but if it was a song about like, you know, pr- 
pray for your, like your future type shit. Cool. But pray you find a man that's going to please you like I can. I, it's, it's, right. he's, he's a toxic nigga. It's just cringy, bro. It's the, it's the same. I feel the same way about that as I do the daddy's home joint from, the, from CLB. Okay. The, all my juniors, daddy's home. Remember that? Yeah. It's like okay. Tizo touchdown can be replaced. If if if, if you replace that Tizo touchdown with Kanye West, you would be like, oh wow, them two, they them two have one. That Kanye be... could have did that. Yeah, but I wouldn't like the subject matter. But that would be fine. I ain't going. I can't lie. Nigga talking All about right. subject matter. Oh, you gonna do this the whole time? No. Uh, I actually, I, y'all see, calling for you with Twenty One Savage. You fuck with it? I like tw- I like calling for you except the skit. Calling for you is perfect all the way up to the Calling for you is perfect without the skit in the 21 Savage GPT, uh, the, chat the, GPT verse. No, nah, it's not perfect without the skit. You're right. It's it's perfect, it's perfect before in the beginning. everything. Yeah. Before the skit, that's cool. Fear Heights. The end of it is I too, though. Fear Heights, Daylight, First Person Shooter. I think that's a win, win, win. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. I love. Because I, I we, love that. Yeah. The Yeet record. We're going to come like back it. to First Person Shooter. Right. Didn't like the shit in the beginning though. Of I don't give a fuck. Of I don't give a fuck. Get bro, to the yeet. After listening to the album, you fuck with it. I'm not. I, it when I listened to the album and then that song came, I wasn't like mad. I'm more mad at his son at the end of daylight. I always. I do not. I hate the fact that it ends with his son. I'm sorry. I not get yet. it. It's adorable, but after a while, we're skipping it. It's like not yet. Come on. He he did exactly what you said, which is when niggas have kids. And I won't do that. And I think you might have said that last podcast when we gave predictions. Yeah, because, because I knew of the 8 I, I said that all the way when, his, when the artwork came out. I was like, oh, yep. he's going to go with his son's joint. Damn. All right, bet. 7969 Santa. A lot of people like that record now. It's I didn't like it. it. It's definitely grown on me. I didn't. I, I, I got to go back to it. And let me keep it 100. Let me say this about 6979 Santa. Tizo Touchdown definitely put himself on the map with that joint. At the end. At the end. Yeah. Look, he had all of us like, hold up, bro. I might actually he have might some. might have some. Yeah, yeah. It was all right. I'm going to go check his he album that out. that note. Did you like Slime You Out? Slime You Out? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm very surprised still to this day that that song went number one because I don't like Slime You Out like that. But what was out when it went number one? Like, what songs were out? You know, everybody checked yeah, yeah. it out. Drake and no... SZA. Yeah. <laughs> Drake and SZA, who was just number one for what? Yeah. Forever for her joint. I weeks. like Slime You Out. I'm not going to say I don't like Slime You Out. I like it, but uh, it's just... It's all right. Bahamas. Slime oh You Out is the start of one of the best runs. Um, runs on the album. I would agree. To go from Slime You Out, Bahamas Promises is easily one of my favorite tracks mm-hmm. on the joint. That's my favorite track from the project. Tried Our Best, one of my fi- one of the one of mm-hmm. the one of the best songs on there is Tried My Best. Tried Our Best. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people say that they didn't like the they not that they didn't like the Screw the World interlude. Yeah. The, uh, the Pimp C joint. What? What that it didn't fit? Or the DJ Screw or whoever. He dedicated this to, I forget. Yeah. But a lot of people felt like it was, you know, shouldn't have been on the album. It was unnecessary. It was redundant. What you think about it? What you think about it? Because it's 23 tracks. So a lot of people felt like, all right, this motherfucker got all of this on here. And songs like this one didn't have to be there. Maybe the Screw the World interlude didn't need to be on there. Maybe not. But also. I like that joint. I'm not too mad at it. I listened to that joint last night in the gym. I wish the album had more rawness. Or more, more little drinks like that, more energy like that. Anyway, mm-hmm. do you like? Okay, Drew Picasso. I think we can agree mm-hmm. that's a good song. Mm-hmm. Did you like Members Only? Yes. You're too down with the gangy. You're one of my members. Yo, I don't know if I'm saying it right, y'all. That song's fire. I don't like that song. And then the party next door is fire. Yo, that song is fire. Members Only is is up there. It's one of the best songs on there. I just don't like the you're too down with the gangy. I'm skipping Get this, bro. With the I'm skipping this. It's just cringy sometimes, bro. It's just this cringy. is what I was telling y'all. Drake had you niggas singing two C slide. Just admit that it ain't really about what the nigga saying anymore. <laughs> Low key, it really ain't what about what Drake it's is saying. Funny. You know when Drake is talking to you and when he ain't. You knew he was gonna talk to you on 8 a.m. in Charlotte. He had everybody up front like, okay, bet he about to talk. Mm-hmm. Y'all act like when he go do his other shit, like. You don't have to take it as serious as the 8 a.m. in Charlotte. Not this one. You're too down with the gangy. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. It's not to be taken so serious. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I'll, I'll give it another spin. What will Pluto do? Fine. It's a great try. Let me tell y'all something. I'm I am so relieved that there was no future on What Will Pluto Do. 
I don't want to. I don't want to hear Future on this. To me, this one of the ones where Future will give me a throwaway verse. Terrell, no, no. Uh, like that, he could have, he could have made this song longer, and it, and it'd be, it'd have been. Now, I, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. What's the joint they did where they was like drop top use? I can't get you. Rock top roof. I can't get used to this. That's used to this. I was called used to this. Yeah. That. Future belonged on that record. Like when I heard that record with the piano, I said, "Oh, Future would don't believe it. Don't deserve the ball." Future was deserved to be on that. I don't get that vibe from this. Maybe you do. That's what I said. I'm like, if, have, if you listen to Fu see that, that's you doubting Future's flow, and you only run back to that one flow that you think of when you think Future. Future could 100% sit on this joint. Just know that nigga has music OT dubs. That's gonna be the album of the year still. I'm sorry. That oh, album's God. getting ready to be nuts. I can't wait for his album to come out. It's just it's wait. just him and Metro. Are y'all forgetting who the fuck Metro is? <laughs> anyway. What All right, Pluto do he fuck the whole song? Well, I did it. I don't like that. I don't like that hook. Me neither, but look, I'm gonna say it. I'm definitely fucking on that hoe. Alright. Hey, look, y'all gotta cool. think about this too. This is what y'all don't think about. This album is a toxic, it's a toxic album. It is. But and to the me. The question is, the question is, what would Pluto do in front of the So I did it. Y'all niggas are lying if you say you don't like that. I'm I do sorry. like it. I do like it. And I'm I know the nigga. nigga. I'm not in love with the hook. You don't gotta be and, in love with the nigga. And my critiques with Drake's album is all, we're gonna talk about like some of the response. <laughs> Were you in love with 2C Slide? The hook? No. But guess what you were saying when it came on? Left foot again, up, right? right foot slide. That's all you did? <laughs> no, we about to slide. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, go ahead. <laughs> All right, bet. Uh, all the parties, everybody likes that song. I guess I'm just a hater, but I'm not fucking with that yeah, track. Party. I thought the Chief Keith, it was great to hear Keith, right? Mm -hmm. With Drake. I, and then he did the don't like shit on uh, uh, one of them songs. I think it's. What's the drink he had? The, the shit I don't like. Is that on Drew Picasso? Should I Maybe don't. Maybe the something in the cup. And I don't like. Maybe that is. I don't know. He has a Chief Keef feature on the album. So I, I mean, before like I'm sorry, a sample somewhere. But this was the song where Chief Keef had an appearance, and it was cool. But it wasn't nothing special. People be like, "Oh my God, I'll be floating when Keef starts singing." I'm like, really? I mean, it was cool, but was it crazy? Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe. But I grew up with Keef, so he's not y'all's. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah. I just didn't. I it was alright. I thought that I don't know why I thought it was Dirk when it when it first started, but it doesn't really matter. It's like a it's like a chill. The best way I can explain all the parties is it's like the best elevator music that you would want to hear when you was on your way at the elevator. It has almost like this waiting room. When, go listen to, to the Chief Key part. It's almost like it has the most simplest like waiting. Like you want hold sound, but it's got this dope ass beat behind it. That's why I feel like people say you float because it's chill. It's not like uh, it's not to be taken too so serious. serious. And when you're looking at it from a vibe standpoint, bro, I'm telling you, put on all the parties when you just chilling. You'll realize, damn, this shit working. Like when the excuse me, when the bitches come around, when you put on all the parties, nah, it's yeah. a reason why this work. Yeah. Look, cause guess what? When it's bitches around. And you got first person shooter on, you gonna lock eyes or, or lock whatever with a nigga who gonna say, hey, J. Cole did his thing on this. Guess what? The bitches are checked out. Unless they into the rap. No, yeah. But I mean, I you need like what he said. Shit. I just didn't you like, need a, a, you like need the fact that he said bitches so much. <laughs> <laughs> but you are 100% right. That is definitely one of those. I'm gonna go back to it. Everything that I say I don't like, I'm gonna go back to. Like I only listen to it again at the gym, mm -hmm. which I've learned is not the best setting for that. You try and get a pump. It's not the best. Uh, 8 a.m. in Charlotte is one of the best tracks of the year. I think 8 a.m. in Charlotte is easily one of my favorite tracks mm -hmm. of the year. That that yeah. that that conductor beat with Drake, it was just great. It was. I would have loved if he would have started the album with that and didn't call it 8 a.m. in Charlotte. And nah, just yeah. called that shit something else. And let me say this about 8 a.m. in Charlotte because I'm a film guy. I got a film degree, a film graduate. Shout out to all of my art graduates out there. Mm -hmm. um, something th this this song is probably one of my favorite songs of the year, just because of the the full ball flipping it, the the full ball flipping this song. I got you. Gotta let me give it up. Okay. This nigga said, "I'm used to seeing tears drop over enormous meals. 
Restaurant clear out, faint echoes of Lauren Hill. I need to explain this to you, Nate. Like, you, and I'm not going to do the, go ahead and do it. Drake explain thing where I'm just saying every line. This is why I love it, right? From a film mm. dude. Used to seeing tears drop over big meals, we get it. Enormous meals, restaurant clear out, faint echoes of Lauren Hill. This is why I want y'all to know. He used to letting Shorty down, so he used to seeing. A girl cry in front of this big ass meal that I'm paying for because this ain't gonna work, you uh-huh. know. So I'm used to seeing the tears fall in front of that. I like how he say faint echoes of Lauren Hill because if you ever be in a restaurant and during an awkward moment, or you ever you and your girl get into it at a restaurant, you start noticing shit that you shouldn't notice. Yeah, like you notice, oh they playing Lauren Hill. Uh-huh. You shouldn't even yeah, know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should still be dialed in. I say let's talk about us. I feel like Jordan Peele. I can tell I'm getting under your skin like an orange peel. I need y'all to understand, like, when he say, let's say, let's talk about us, I feel like Jordan Peel. The reason why I like that line is because, of course, Jordan Peel has a movie called Us. But also, when, as a man, when you go to your, go to your girl right now and tell her, uh, we need to talk about us. Uh-huh. And what you, what's she going to do? She's going to get scared. Mm-hmm. So I know I'm getting under your skin. So I say, let's talk about us. I feel like Jordan Peele because what does Jordan Peele deliver? Scary movies. Jordan Peele makes horror films. Mm-hmm. Like, and the, the, the joints that make yeah. you think. So Jordan Peele's goal is to scare you. So me saying, I say to talk about us, I feel like Jordan Peele because I can tell I'm getting under your skin like an orange peel. Uh-huh. Like I can tell what I'm about to say going to get under your skin. That's why when I say I need to talk about us, I feel like Jordan Peele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a play on the fact that he has it's, a film us, of course. It's a play on the fact that he has a film us, uh-huh. right? Because your words don't match your actions like a foreign film, and now it's silencing the lamb uh, like a horror film. I'm sorry, as a film guy, that's, a, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's not just regular, oh, that was just some regular shit. I feel like that's top tier. That's a top tier. That is, right yeah, it is. If J. And Cole if that, said you got that, it, hold on, explain the last line for niggas that may not have got it. So we've okay. gotten to this, we went to the restaurant, she cried. I said, it's all about us. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I say let's talk about us. It sounds scary, and I'm gonna get under your skin because you know your words don't match your actions for real, for real. Right. Feel me? But also to play on your words not match your actions like a foreign film and not silencing a Lambo. Like a horror mm-hmm. film, but silencing a Lambo. Meaning I caught you up on what you did. Now we're not talking. This because, is because go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the reason why I fuck with it is because this is, your, this is my way of still being toxic, which is the theme of the album, mm-hmm. but just using like a, a movie flip. I can just mm-hmm. use it with a, flip, with a flip. Remember how Charlie Clips say... Uh, but then the flip is... I thought I just said the flip's real, no? You never see the Silence in the Lambs part. Well, they get it. Silence in the Lambs is a horror film. Goddamn. Right, motherfuckers will miss it and say, oh, he didn't realize Silence it. in the Lambs <laughs> is a horror film. Let me tell Silence you of the Lambs. Or, well, you know what I mean. But the way he flipped yeah, it. Yeah, but the way he flipped it. You uh, know that they will kill us in the comments. Would they? Who doesn't know that? Bro, a lot of, but they will make it seem like you didn't know that. I'm a fucking film buff. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm just saying. I get it, though. You're right. People will be like, remember they killed us for not knowing all, but did you guys not know Wagyu was pizza sauce? Oh, my God, yes. You remember Wagyu that? was a spaghetti sauce. No, Prego. Prego, Prego. he's talking spaghetti sauce. It's like, yo, duh. Duh. Yeah. You dumb motherfucker. Did that? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh he said spaghetti prego. And I didn't get he meant the song. All right, go ahead. If J. Cole said that line, y'all niggas would say that J. Cole was better than Kendrick. Because that's all. That's what y'all would do. J. Cole is the best rabbi out right now. If J. Cole said that exact line. But I, I don't say like, lines. Like, watch yeah. your mouth. I feel like Drizzy say shit like line. that and people don't put respect on his name. That's true. We're going to talk about that too. Um... But yeah, just to wrap, a rap, ADM in Charlotte is fire. Didn't he say, what did he say? What's the Orson Welles joint? He had a lot of movie flips in that joint. They can't sell it, because no one they can sell it. No, they, no one they can't sell a Citizen Kane if they Orson Welles. Mm, that was another one in that joint, yeah. Fire. Y'all got to go watch our reaction. It's actually on YouTube. It's free. BBL Love. I think I like BBL Love too. I BBL like. Love, I like it. It's not real till you feel it. A lot of people like that. I th- I, 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 all right, cool. Gently is I, terrible. I don't like the Bad Bunny joint. Gently is terrible, and it does, it does an injustice to... Like what Bad Bunny is <laughs> all about. And I hate that that record ended up being like that. Because people that listen to Bunny, like Bunny just put out one of the best albums of probably the last two decades. 100% one of the best albums of the last two decades. Is he dropping? Today? He's dropping today. Yes, he is. Boogeyman. Boogeyman. Offset. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go number one. 
And then, and then wifey gonna go number one. And this thing, Drake, you think you're gonna go number one your second week with Bunny dropping? Your, your number one streak, you, you beat Mike, cool for a week. Cool. But what Pluto do, he fucked all, so I did it. But the Gently record didn't do justice to like what a Bunny record. You remember Mia? A bit of me, uh, me, uh, the last yeah. one they did together. Yeah, that was I felt fire. like Drake was more chill. This, bro, people have been, I, I follow a lot of people on uh, TikTok that broke down his Spanish. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker was saying everything wrong. It was almost like, damn. Didn't I tell you he was saying me gusta? If you can hear <laughs> a Spanish, I've never heard a Spanish person who can speak fluent. You hear the, the, you can hear the word gusta. Terrence, you, if I hear gusta, I'm going to say, just learn Spanish. He definitely was saying some basic shit, because it, that was fine, but his conjugation was just all fucked up. And it's like, you could have gotten somebody to help you with this, bro, instead of just doing that. And then Bunny, it wasn't really a track, like Bunny's part, people fuck with, which mm -hmm. is why the song is charting well. But it just it didn't really have a hook, it was just verse and a verse. It just didn't do justice to how great Bunny really is. And I don't really like the way that Rich, uh, I don't really like the way that Gently starts. Like, the way it starts, it throw me off. I'm yeah, like, what it's is like, this? yeah, I don't want to hear it. Definitely skipping that joint. Rich Baby Daddy is fire, I'm sorry. I hated the sexy You hated red. on it in the beginning. I hated the sexy red in the beginning because now, y'all know how it is when, you know, you just kind of build like a dislike for a certain music. So when you hear them, you just like. You have a dislike for sexy red? Her music, yeah. Why? Just because it just sounds like garbage. I mean, like, it's not bad. I just don't want to play it for me. You know? Ski Yee is garbage. If you see me and you trying to say what's up. So think about me, Dolo, in my crib and then Ski Yee comes on. Do you think I'm letting That's not fair because you said you talking about, about me. No, nah, but we talking about the Drake record. You said put it on when the bitch is around. You basically had a... You can't play Ski Yee. You shouldn't be listening to that if you at the home chilling. Trust me. I get it. If Look, you I thought we were talking about the album. I'm not saying that I don't like Ski Yee. I get it. It works for the bitches. It will 100% work. You know, you've seen me put Ski Yee on. The only bad song Sexy Red get, really got is the Pound Town joint. Some of her features are trash. Even think about it. Pound Town is trash. Hell we got to stop S -S acting like the shit that we think is funny. Pound Town is trash. Like, you think looking for the hoes is trash? I'm looking for the hoes. Do y'all remember this joint? Hoes. Remember that but but burn away and Cobb Ben knock your legs off? Yeah, the beatbox challenge. That was only dope because of the beat. Only dope because of the beat. Do y'all the, the TikTok? Do y'all respect Spot 'em Got 'em? That's how I look at Sexy Red. Like, okay, something is working on social media with you, and you're connected to it. Hold up, T. But she got her mixtape, the hood rich drink that she put out. She got a couple records from that drink that's going crazy. So, do you think that Sexy Red, Ski Yee, Hellcats, SRT, looking for the hoes? That's what I'm talking about. It's just like watching. Remember when they had Nut? If you buck, and then they had cry, uh, They had the. Uh, Pop, lock, and drop it. It's an era. I get it for right now. But it's more like a hot jacket. Sexy Red, I got all the respect in the world for it. Get her money. She going to get generational wealth from this. So I don't feel bad saying it. You like a hot jacket. You like them Balenciaga runners you see everybody running around with. Oh, oh, look. Dad jeans. Trucker hats. It's working now. And it will work now. And you will make money now. But are you what's next? Are you going to push the culture? Are you still going to be here a decade from now? Probably not. I, I, okay, me? like somebody like a Cardi B, her prowess, she's so big, she can be around a decade from now. You know uh -huh. the way she moving, because low key, she was already something before a TikTok trend. You feel yeah. me? Cardi B was a, a person, a name. Same with Nicki Socialized. Minaj. Socialite, she was huge. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. same with them. Yeah, that's Glorilla. Right. Uh, Sexy Red. Even a lot of these little joints, y'all are getting on because. Of certain, sometimes we'll think it's funny. Look, I'm F R E E fuck nigga free. All the single women loved it, and it was a fun thing. It's well, all women, all women put a single women. Women period love that. Thing. Women, Even women, women in relationship. Period, it got a, yeah, but like to me, it's like it's fun. So we are gonna have fun with it. It ain't. But how be, do you know it's fun and not the tide really changing toward that? Where now these are gonna be the artists that are around. I know it's fun because the way that y'all talk about people like Sexy Red. What do y'all say when y'all talk about Sexy Red? Y'all know when your when your parents or when somebody that you respect say something about sexy red, you gotta give them the same responses that we used to give for Chief Heath. Yeah, you know he says whatever, but you know, you know it just sounds fire. It sounds Chief fire. Keith just got on this album, and he came out when we was in tenth grade, ten years, not ten years, twelve years ago. 
But Chief Keith. He's still around. He ain't a, he ain't on top or nothing like that. But like Chief Keith, arguably, came with a whole new sound in a way. No, he did. He changed the game. He changed Sexy Red is not a, that is not a new sound. That's why I was going to tell you, Rich Baby Daddy, I actually like because the Sexy Red don't even really sound like Sexy Red till her verse. Yeah. Her verse tough to get through. Listen it to it. It is. Does that deserve a spot on a Drake album? It doesn't. And that's also a knock on him. That's another knock he on him. He should have gave her a verse. We talked about this. He's a get with ass nigga. Let me get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm about to put sexy on my verse. I'm, I'm going to put sexy on my album because she popping right now. I get it. That's the part. That's the, like I said. It's the Drake said. He did the same it's thing the for the city hat. It's the trucker hat. Drake put a trucker hat on because it, if he, you know, if he puts one on, it's because it's popping now. It's like, it's, it's whatever. But that J. Cole and first person shooter, that ain't no trucker hat. Like, that ain't no. Yeah, that's something. That's, that's, that ain't no trend. That's a big dog on your album. You know what type of feature you got with that. Right. And you know what you're doing with the sexy red. Hey, look. I just got some love deep inside of me. It's fun. And no, that drink was fun. You know, if Jay That was fun, I ain't gonna lie. I was letting that drink driving. That drink is fun. Drake gets the benefit of, of having fun like that if you want. He can look, he can put Tizo Touchdown on his album, and, and it's not really a serious fucking project. Right. If Drake were to put Tizo Touchdown, I'm sorry. If Jay Z new album had Sexy Red on it, then it's like, damn, what the fuck going on? Because it's Jay. Yeah, we even, want, even J. Cole couldn't do that. Yeah, even J. Cole, it'll be like, what? Drake is the only one. Y'all don't do take him. Remember when he said, uh, he got a line on one of these songs where he said, um, they know that I'm the one they got a boycott. I told I told Jimmy Jam I used the Grammy as a doorstop. I think that was on, I don't know what that was on. But like he was basically saying, yo, I know that I'm the one that nobody gonna fuck with. Y'all made me, he said, y'all made me the villain when I ain't one of these type shit. Hey. That's true. Y'all said, oh, Drizzy, Drake can do whatever, so I'm gonna do whatever. Yeah, he do, and that he does. And it works. All right, man. Rounding out the fucking album, uh, Another Late Night is fire. I love a Late Night is one of my favorite, if not top, that's top five for me on the, on the project. Really? Yes. You still, do you still feel the same way about Away From Home? In the review, we basically said that it was just him reflecting on his life. Yeah, and that's the like, one that I 100% don't listen to. Yeah, it's like, okay, I remember when such and such did this. All right. I remember. I remember when we... Nah. Some people have been... A lot of people don't realize how good Polar Opposites is. I've seen a couple of people that reviewed the album say, I don't know if I would go back to that one. And I feel like you got to be able to feel a track like that. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best records on the album. It is. For sure. 100%. Definitely top five for me. I said in the album it was my favorite track that I listened to during the reaction, and it was. When people say that, like, that's my thing. Like, I feel like that's his bet. That's when, when, when it's all said and done, it's going to be tracks like Polar Opposites, mm -hmm. Get Along Better, uh, This Shit Too and Too Real. What is that joint? Oh, that's Get Along oh Better God. with Your Friends. Yeah. I feel like it's the songs like that that's really going to speak to who he was as an artist. Because yeah. these are the tracks, Polar Opposites. Even shit like members only, like you don't like members only, but I feel like that this is Drake showing that other side that these other rappers low key cannot tap into. Same for me with Bahamas Promises and Try It Out Best. Yes, yes, those two. And that's why the conversation about like wanting the old Drake, I feel like you get elements of it. It's just not a full project of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know what? We might all right, bet. Well, we might as well move the conversation for you. Want, well, you want to talk about first person shooter? Let shooter? me say one last thing about the Drake album. A lot of y'all. That don't like the album, or I just don't, I just really just don't, don't, just don't fuck with it. My thing is like, some of you don't have a life that would align with this album. This is like some of you listening to like YG, My Crazy Life, Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City, and saying, I just couldn't connect with it. I just didn't fuck with it. It's like, you didn't fuck with it because you couldn't connect with it, then that says a lot. But not fucking with an album because you say, you know what, I don't mm -hmm. like the young music. Or I don't like the fact that he's singing and I like this. Yo, that's totally fine. But when you say you can't connect, I think it just needs to be said. Some people have not lived a life to be able to connect with this music. Even old niggas. Some of you have never been, some of you have never had your heart broken. Some of you have never been on some petty shit or mm -hmm. on a toxic side of your life or had people do you dirty. And you'll see like low key. Like, I'm listening to Bahamas Promises, different than some of you niggas. But this is my thing. Or, or I'm listening to uh, Polar Opposites, different. 
when you lived it a little bit. You make good. You make a good point. But my rebuttal to that would be when you think about a YG my crazy life. They talking about doing B and E's and yeah. you know being from a place and gang shit. You know what I'm saying? I love that album and can't relate to it. Mm -hmm. But since the music, since it was executed so well, yeah, it ended up being fire. Same thing with Good Kid, Mad City. Good Kid, Mad City. A lot of him being a good kid in a in, in a mad city. A lot of people can only re relate to, you know, just being a backpack person themselves, or you know what I'm saying, or mm -hmm. not really being from the hood like that. But yeah. it was executed so well that people fuck with it. People still fuck with it. So when you say a lot of y'all just don't live the life, can, can connect. It's not just the ladies' records on this joint, because those records you're talking about are the minority of the project. Most of the record, he's talking about some chick. Most of the that, album is toxic. And that's why I said, yo, I, I, I actually fuck with it. I mean, I've been in a toxic place in my life. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm saying, like, if you haven't lived a toxic place in your life, let's say you have you, you been with one girl since you was in high school. That would be the nigga that's like, fuck Drake. I get it. Not yet. You know, I, I get it. Because you probably wouldn't fuck with uh, Bahamas Promises. It just sounds like the nigga crying about a girl. When you've never did that. Like I hear him saying, I used to, what was the joint? Uh, the joint from Polar Opposites that he said. Well, fuck, fuck what he said. I just, you know, the person who listens to My Crazy Life and, and Kendrick Lamar, when you think about them, yeah, you can't connect with those albums because you might not be able to relate to it, but you can still like it. But also, this is gonna bring us back to like expectations. You don't got no expectations of YG to do anything but that. And look. Kendrick Lamar came with that, and look what, what became the expectations. Oh, this was good, but, you know, it wasn't Good Kid, Mad City. This was good, but it wasn't Good Kid, Mad City. Because once you like something super tough, it all becomes, of a sudden, that becomes your expectations. Mm -hmm, the barometer changed. You ever go to a place and the food be bomb, and then when you go back, it just don't hit the same? Mm -hmm. It's just because you could have been fried the first time you had it. Now your expectations were set right here. Yeah. That's why I'm like, Drizzy is one of those people who has delivered so much. That your expectation is going to be like this all over the place. When you, and then when you finally get it, you're going to feel like you got yanked. But just like every project. And you know what? That's what I wanted to talk about next. The, uh, the reception of the project. The biggest conversation to come from it, right? Uh, at, at this point, we've had a week's worth of the whole Drake versus Joe Budden conversation where mm -hmm. Joe kind of challenged him to make more mature music. Get with people, you know, get with people your age, stop talking to 25-year-olds. Drake responded, whatever. And it started this big conversation amongst pretty much everybody. Hot 97, Apple, all the everybody basically talked about, you know, should he make more mature music or should he, you know, keep doing what he's doing, or is it catering to the young crowd? XYZ. I'll start by saying this. My critique of Drake's project, y'all just heard we ran through the track list. A lot of it I didn't like. Mm -hmm. But me not liking it is all based on like a creative space. Like, I didn't like what he did for this project. I think the narratives that are brewed and the, the shit that people are saying about Drake needing to grow up yeah. is all bullshit. I think that whole angle to me is the reason why a lot of y'all are not where he is. The Biggest benefit that Drake has is his ability to be a chameleon and not age. Like his music, mm -hmm. right? He's he's able to, whatever is working, he's able to get right in line with it and it doesn't sound foreign. You know what I'm saying? If Nas started rapping like yeeting them, it would be weird. Mm -hmm. It would be like, yo, he's doing this. Drake, everybody know he's going to do whatever works. So even though it's like, oh, he got a yeet record, it don't sound like Boring. Yeah. And so for me, I just think that angle is flawed and it doesn't, it, it's proven that it does not work. I think, like, like I said, for me, I don't want a more mature Drake. If this nigga want to do another toxic project with Future, guess what? Sign us all up. Mm -hmm. Her loss came out on November 4th last year. Mm -hmm. It's about to be not even, so it's not even a year yet that everybody praised that project. This project comes out. Y'all don't like it, but as opposed to just saying you don't like it, now it's think peace, think peace. See, he's not making mu the music needs. He needs to change. 
It's like, yo, we just all loved that last project. Like, loved it. But then think about it. Did we? Did we all love? Well, we did. But, like, was the reception for that project not the same as this, it feels like? As the same as it was for Auntie No. People were talking about her loss like, yo, that might be one of his best out, even though 21 is on it. It might be, like, a great a, a, in the top of his project. No of course bullshit. It's not it was fire when it, it came out. It was fire. It, it wasn't received like this. But I do think... I still think people said that we was that we was gassing it. Like, maybe her loss wasn't love immediate, but I think in the beginning, people were like, y'all are gassing it, y'all are gassing it. And then and people started to come around like, wow, you know what? This project is legit. Nah, yeah. And honestly, it, it to me, like, sticking with the young crowd is the best way to go. Like, Joe... Like Joe I listen to Joe every week. So... When he, when they were making their predictions for the album, they were ready for the album to come out. It was what it was. Like everybody was like, "Yo, Drake's dropping." Everybody, everybody basically getting their popcorn ready. Mm-hmm. Then your sentiment to him is get with people your own age. A lot of people said, "Yo, Joe is a lot of niggas on Twitter, especially given the back and forth." People saying, "Oh, Drake's salty. Joe's right. He needs to grow up. He needs to just grow up already." Drake does not need to grow up at all. That would be the worst thing for his career, if you ask me. Y'all niggas are not selling 500,000 units a week. I'm sorry, um, um, in your first week. Because you're not Drake. Because if he took y'all niggas' advice, he would be just like y'all. He's or Nas. Yeah. Or Nas. Where well, you have a niche fan base that fucks 20K with- a week. Uh, 20K 20, first week. 20K first week. And you're still respected. You're still respected. But that's not what Drake wants to do. And then I also wanted to say this. Well, matter of fact, I, I, before I talk about the numbers, I was going to see if you wanted to jump in about the old niggas. I agree with what you're saying. I definitely agree that, you know, he's doing something where he's doing something that a lot of the older rappers can't do. And I feel like it's starting to come off like hate. I feel like because he can go get with a yeet and fit and go number one. Mm-hmm. And you see other people try to do little songs with current artists and it just don't really pop. I think the older dudes will start saying, man, he need to go back to what we doing. Like, he need to go back to our level shit. Shit that I would fuck Shit with. that I would do mm-hmm. because it would inspire me. Bro, that's like, think about these niggas that be telling us. Also, like him staying young. I mean, that's what is going to sell. That's why he's going number one. Like he said, I'm, I'm one away from Michael, nigga, beat. Like... Right. You know how niggas tell us, y'all need to do that black thought. It's like, you know what? I want to check it out. But if I really do the black thought, how many of you niggas are actually going to give a fuck if we really do a black thought video? Mm-hmm. It's going to be seven like, of you niggas. Exactly. And that doesn't take away any of the respect for him. Like, no, nah. cool, but he's just not of this time now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And this is the real Look, y'all, y'all can do that fucking Uzi, but y'all couldn't do black thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uzi what? just did went number one. Exactly. You know? And this is my thing. This is the real reason why a lot of old heads have an issue with Drake. Y'all favorite rappers that y'all grew up on, to include Jay-Z, he never had a prime that lasted this long. Mm -mm. Drake has been the top guy, meaning a top artist. Because think about it. Jay had Wayne at one point, right? Where it was him and Wayne, right? Drake had that era with him. Jay was out. Everybody was still out. But Drake was still one of them top dudes. Mm-hmm. Drake been that since 2010. It's been 13 years. Even Jay, that's why I bring up Jay. Even Jay had a point where he just like, was like, all right, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you can argue, okay, Jay from 96 to 2006. Yeah, but then Wayne. What about little Wayne? You can't just say this nigga was not the guy. Drake been that top dude. Nobody can outsell me. Even DMX was was DMX. Even DMX exactly. You know, there was a lot of people. There's an argument with him. for Drake. And look, back then, what was they saying? Jay, Jay was talking about it. My uncle said, I never sell a million records. I sell a million records like a million times. That goes back to back in the day, it was about what you could do. Yeah. Now that we're in the streaming era, people try to discredit. And that's why I was trying to get to the numbers part, because it's like people like to say, of course, Drake's going. I've seen somebody say, of course, Drake's going to do 500,000. He could literally just put out anything and he'll do 500,000. Y'all are lim- y'all are really minimizing how big of a feat it is to do that. Nah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Five hundred thousand units first week. You don't get that just because people like you. And did honestly never mind you five hundred thousand first. No, week? exactly. It didn't. So he can't do anything. And that's week. why if you go back and listen to diplomatic community, he was like niggas started talking like I was slowing down because views came out. Views did a million first week. First week million in 2016. 2017. 
he put out the Playlist album, which was More Life. It only did 500,000. You see how I'm saying? It only did 500,000. Mm-hmm. But niggas started talking like, shit, only did half of what his last album did. That's because it's not that good. The niggas still did 500,000. He did a million, though. He did a million first week. Yeah. 500,000 the next week. And that's why on Diplomatic Immunity, he, that, that first part of that song is, is so true up to today. Niggas started talking like I was slowing down. Opinions over statistics, of course. Because we're not going to talk about actual numbers. Because y'all are going to, we can, I guess we'll think what you think and not focus on the number. Because whatever I say, fuck the numbers. The music wasn't good. Okay, cool. Your opinion over the statistics, of course. Gassed off journalistic, meaning all of you motherfuckers are journalists. So we just going to get gassed off the journalists. Fuck with me and all you'll get is the ballistic report. Meaning I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just putting the numbers on the table. Because I'm still doing the numbers. And legit, five years after that, I'm still that dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that's where a lot of the old heads have smoke. They're mad. You love Jay, but Jay couldn't do this. You love Nas, but Nas couldn't do this. You love Wayne, but and Wayne put Drake on, but he couldn't do this. Ye didn't have a run like this. And this nigga still doing 450 on the album y'all hate. Yeah, I just feel like that with the number thing. But yeah, how do you feel? Because you have been a numbers don't matter guy. I feel like there's no way to judge music these days. Like me saying that I felt like Fall of the Dogs was a classic, right? Mm-hmm. I said it on purpose. I didn't say it was a classic. I said Fall of the Dogs might be a classic. Just stir up the TF. And I put the, 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 the dog, right? And I think it's funny because motherfuckers act like numbers matter. Because in one moment, numbers don't matter. When we talk about who's the, y'all will say, y'all will come out and say J. Cole is the best living rapper, right? But what's that based off of? Is that based off how you feel? Oh, no, I'm just talking about ability. I'm talking about this and that. Okay, bet. So, like, the metric is that? Because it ain't numbers when we talk about that. If I were to tell you that Drake was the best rapper currently living, right, the numbers back it up. But nobody will let me get it off. It's going to be subjective, yeah. Nobody will let you get that off. That's why it's like numbers only matter for specific arguments with hip-hop. And that's why it's always a slippery slope when you talk numbers. But you see how motherfuckers move the goalposts? Because numbers didn't matter until Gunna did more first week than the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Then it was like, that album wasn't even good at the Gunna beat weekend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or Kendrick only did two such and such. Or he only did 187. Now y'all give a fuck about the numbers. Now the numbers when you want you to, to discredit, discredit. right? Yeah, but when it comes to the nigga that's winning, oh, it doesn't matter. Of course he's going to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the, it. And I did not like the album, y'all. I'm not even capping for the nigga, but some of the somebody arguments say, just have a little salt. Yeah, somebody can say four other dogs is better than Mr. Morale and Big Steppers. And I, if I say no, it's not. Well, four other dogs did four hundred fifty first week. This album did one. Look, so now is it about who? What album is making more? Not yeah. Like, what album is getting more spins? You're That's right. why it's like, low-key, it's really about you. Like, it's a subjective argument. It's mm-hmm. like a subjective, it's a, it's a subjective argument that people are trying to be objective about. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, it's subjective. It is literally just you. Like, oh, I thought the album was fire. Oh, well, I thought it was trash. Yeah. Okay, well, that's two different opinions. Yeah. You don't have any reason to say it's trash. Look, why was it trash? Man, I just don't like all that fucking singing. <laughs> all right, well, look. <laughs> What we talk about, it's, it's not, rap is unlike anything else we argue about as men. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially, specifically music, I would say. Not even just rap. Sports, if you say Justin Jefferson, the best receiver in the league, you're going to go statistics. He led the league. He led the league in he catches. He had the receiving title the last two years. Mm-hmm. He was a rookie of the year. He was this, he was that. You can go accolades. We can't do that with hip-hop because we've gotten to the point where the only accolade for real is what? We've discredited the Grammy. Not, now numbers don't really matter, except sometimes they do. Except sometimes. So it's really just all subjective. I guess it's about buzz. And this is what I'll tell y'all. Some people say, oh, it can't be a classic because it got to have buzz for the next couple years. I feel like Drake is like a Michael Jackson, Beyonce type of artist. These songs are going to be played, y'all. And you'll just have to wait and see. Just the same thing with Honestly Nevermind. Not yet. Would you say Honestly Nevermind was a classic? I would not say it's a classic, no. But I like that album now. But you really like it, right? Mm-hmm. I, all right, and I think I feel like classic is a term that's gotten burnt. But what about staple? What? But what? what 
makes would you that say a that staple. honestly never mind was a staple no no I think it's a I think it ended up being a good it's a good project that we slept on same way if you're reading this too late I didn't like it I still think that's one of Drake's worst projects you don't think it's a classic no if you're reading this was an album of throwaways young niggas think it's a classic but in his discography I don't think if you're reading is a classic I need to tweet that I'm gonna tweet that later if you're reading this it's too late. It's a classic. It's not a classic. It's not. What makes if you're reading this is too late classic? When you running through the six with Mike Wolves, that makes it classic. See, you do that like that's all that album had to give. That album was fucking amazing, and it took over the summer of, of 2016. I don't think it's a classic. I think it's an album of throwaways. I think that's where that's where I have an issue with you. I think we use that classic word too loosely. What makes it classic? Good kid, Mad City, like you said. Plenty podcast, a couple podcasts ago. That is a classic. Take care. Nothing was the same. Those are classics. This like, is us having a subjective argument and trying to be objective. Look what he just said. <laughs> Good kid, Mad City. Now that's classic. <laughs> How? Like, what is your? So, what is the reason because, why that's a classic and something like? If you're reading, if you're reading isn't. Go ahead. If you're reading, it's too late. Is an album of Drake throwaways. So, to me, so it uh, sounds like that. What if somebody thought Untitled outside of? Go ahead. Outside of jungle, like I love records like Jungle. Yeah. You get a couple joints on there, but the album itself is not classic. I'm sorry, that's not. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Let's just keep it a hundo. We can be we can keep it a hundred. An album shouldn't be called a classic just because you really like it. I can say that. And sometimes we'll say, man, that jungle was a classic. Because to me, and in my life, the album hit so crazy that it was a classic. You can't tell me that. There are certain things that I think are classic front to back that you can't tell me that it's not. Like, Bullets Ain't Got No Name, Volume 1, Nipsey Hussle, to me, is classic. It should be framed somewhere because of the nigga's life. Like, but when you go listen to it, you're going to be like, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to this. All right, bet. But to me, because of how I'm viewing it from my perspective, that's a classic, that's a classic record. Like, we're in an era now where Drake puts so much music out that people don't want to say that, honestly, never mind was a classic, right? But it's the same way that they didn't want to say Jesus was a classic. Jesus is not a classic. You think Jesus is a classic? I think Jesus changed music forever. You know what? Jesus might be a classic because of that reason. I'll give you that. Because but so much was inspired by that. Who was inspired by if you're reading this too late? It was just another Drake album. And look, it ain't a, that, that's my thing. And it don't got to be about what changed music in order for it to be classic. Every uh, when we had this argument, I said this on the T on the TL. Every Beyonce album is a classic. Every single one. Every single Beyonce album is a classic. Is classic. That's a, now that's a fact. Now, like now every you... single Beyonce album has to go up on a shelf. And there, and this the thing, when she put out Lemonade, there were some people, even Renaissance. There's people who are like, no, I really not. just wanted a Sasha Fierce. I really wanted a B Day. Okay, yeah, but. You're not going to look at Renaissance and say, well, you know, B-Day and Sasha Fierce were fire albums and those were this way, so Renaissance, not a classic. Like, nah, like, it's okay for us to acknowledge our Michael Jacksons and our Beyonce's while they're here, and Drake is that. Now, I would will be a classic album in 10 years. Watch. I may not give Renaissance, if somebody made an argument that Renaissance wasn't classic, I would say not yet. It birthed the biggest tour in black artist history. I think Renaissance is already a classic Number two, um, Cuff It and Energy alone from the album are going to be played at wedding receptions, cookouts, graduations, universities, all over the world for the rest of the... Of the for the rest of... It's, it's, it's literally going to move like a Frankie Beverly record. But... We get it. But I don't know if... I would... Renaissance is not a classic album, Terrell. I, I wouldn't say it's classic yet. It's too early. You see, this is the thing. It just came out. That's why I'm about to just step off of classic. I'm going to step off of classic and just talk about... It's hard to step away from classic because we're not dealing with money bag, yo. We're not dealing with... And there's no disrespect to these I'm artists. Say, damn. <laughs> <laughs> we're not dealing with a small artist. These, are, these artists have generational talent. If you don't think Drake, Drake has generational talent, not yet. it's a reason why... Everybody that's listening to this right now, it's a reason why you can put for all the dogs on and slowly 
you'll start to appreciate the music. It ain't, you're not broken. You can put a Michael Jackson album on and be like, fuck, this joint is fire. What's that joint? Uh, and y'all gonna kill me for not knowing the name of this joint. What's the Michael Jackson song we love from uh, Candace's favorite, one of Candace's favorite joints? What, Black and White? No. Uh, is it from the Michael Jackson, is it uh, the Michael Jackson Experience? What, Terry, do you know how many albums that nigga has? What song is it? Sing it. <laughs> uh, beat it. Billie Jean. Um, the Earth song. It's a sleeper. It's from his, uh, it's from the, the album that he put out later in his career, uh, Butterfly. Oh, okay. You'll, you'll hear Butterflies by Michael Jackson and be like, hey, yo, this joint. <laughs> and it's because it's real talent. Like, put an old Stevie Wonder project on. Go listen to Stevie Wonder, uh, I'm, look, I'm forgetting it, but the joint where he just put out, uh, Higher Ground, where he had put Higher Ground on. It's Higher Ground and then mm. another joint on it. Back in the day, albums that were classic albums, they were albums that represented moments like you're talking about with mm. Cuff It and Energy. Like, that's all you needed for your album to be classic. You did not need, back in the day, for every song on your album to be good in order for your album see, to be classic. But that's why I disagree, because mm. most of the records on your album were good. Would you say Good Rich or Die Trying is a classic? 100%. One of the best rap albums of all time. I don't think... Get Rich or Die Trying? Get Rich or Die Trying. 50 Cent! 50 Cent. You about to say that's not a classic. Does 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying have zero skips? Almost. Does Nas Illmatic have zero skips? So we saying that it has to have zero skips to be classic. But that's, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It was people telling me, nah, see, there's songs on there that I would skip, so you can't call it a classic. And it's like, okay, because it's songs that you would skip, we can't call it a classic, but low key. Okay, yeah. Nah, I'm with you. I, I I'm, with, I'm with you, though. I get the classic thing has been used. This, this is what I get. Classic has been used in a way that we can't start changing it. We can't, like, like classic is something that's normally been uh, attached to an album that's been out for a minute. That was a classic. This is a classic because it aged well. I understand that way of looking at classic. I think we do get a little glazed and we see something and we say, oh, this was so fire. I know it's going to be a classic, so we'll mm -hmm. call it a classic. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? I did want to give Future some flowers real quick, random, because the conversation had, when we were talking about maturity and artists and stuff like that, we were talking about artists that were able to transcend time. Drake was out when Wale, Big Sean, a lot of artists that you don't really see no more mm -hmm. was doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Drake has been able to keep a modern sound. That's his biggest attribute. I said it before. It's his biggest attribute. It's being able to create, like you said, the fact that you could put out a dance album, everybody kill you for it, and then later they fuck with it. That's why I was listening to, uh, I think I was listening Generational to Talent. Yeah. Nadeska was talking about how y'all literally just did this exact same thing with Honestly Nevermind, and then in six months, y'all were talking about how, oh, this, is a cla this was actually a great album, and y'all... Now it's y'all was sleep. Y'all were sleep. Nah. Nah. We nah. all slept. We all slept. Yeah. But the reason why I bring up Future is because I feel like Future is an artist that was out before Drake. 2012. 2011. Same time as Drizzy. 2010. When the, when the astronaut, astronaut status came out. 2010. Okay. So about around the same, same time. Yeah. Around the same time as Drake, he's been able to stay. He doesn't have an age sound. The niggas. Future is over 40. Mm -hmm. Gotta be. And right? that's who they He's, really don't want to drop. And but that's my thing about like somebody like that. Like he is also an artist that Do y'all know that Future has like seven, eight straight number one albums? Do you know that? Future has put out six straight, six or seven straight number ones. Like the last Is that true? That's a fact. Search this. Six straight number ones. Put put respect to my man Pluto name. Six straight number ones or seven straight number ones? On Billboard. Future. Or on the hip hop. Great. Hip hop number hottest album chart. Ones. He got his eighth number one album on the Billboard chart 200 with I Never Liked You, but it doesn't mean it was in a row. Eighth number one. Eight number ones. Eight number ones. Put respect on this nigga's name. He is really one of them guys. These are the man. ones that went number one. I Never Liked You went number one. High of Life went number one. The Save Me EP went number five. The Wizard went number one. Um, Hendrix went number one. Future went number one. The Juice Evolve. World, the Juice World joint was number one. No, it wasn't. It was oh, number, number two. two. 
What a time to be alive. Of course, DS2 was number one. Honest, honest was number two. Damn, you dead? He that, he that dude. Got Marnie on my pockets. These those two. <laughs> All right, Batman. Hey, look, we knew we was gonna talk about the Drizzy situation and the uh, the discourse for a little while, but we're gonna move forward. I know y'all seen Jada. Nah, yeah. And look, a lot of people asked if we were going to talk about Jada Pinkett. And if you don't know the backstory, Jada Pinkett just recently put out a book, right? It's the, kind of like a tell-all. Mm-hmm. Um, what she talking about her, you know, marriage and shit like that. And basically, what Jada Pinkett has come out and say, said is that for the last seven years, since 2016, her and Will have not been together. They've been living separate lives. But publicly, they come out together. They still live together under the same roof, like... It's almost like they live together, they like with each other, but they're not together. They it's are a- old school, bro. I'm telling you, this is an old school thing where it's like, yo, we got married and we made that uh that we made that choice before God and we don't want to break that. And we'll so break we it. together, but we separated. I, that's what I was gonna say. A lot of the people judging Will and Jada ha- are with somebody that they just mm-hmm. not with. That's a fact. You're separated, but y'all still but together. Still together. This and is you know way what? more common than, than these two. This is what people need to realize behind this announcement. You said you telling me from 2016 y'all been separated but together. That means Will Smith's entire YouTube journey, where he's like, "This is my wife, Jada." All them videos, y'all wasn't together. Mm-hmm. The Aladdin premiere, y'all wasn't together. Gemini Man, y'all wasn't together. At the motherfucking Oscars. When he goes up on stage and slaps Chris Rock for disrespecting you, y'all was not even for real together. And my overarching point is this. Pray you find love like that. Where you love a motherfucker so much that we not even together. I knew I fucked with this nigga. Hey, look. We the I same knew way. I fucked with him. <laughs> we I thought you was going a different way with it. Hang on. Nah. Pray you find love like that where you don't. I'm not even with this motherfucker, but I love this motherfucker so much. That I will put my career on the line for that disrespect. You know what I'm saying? That's a different level of love. And let me tell you something. This is, this is my, the, the biggest thing in that. People do not realize what that is. A lot of shit makes sense now. All the Tupac posts. The way she talk about Will and even her birthday post. It was kind of like she was talking about somebody that she wasn't in an intimate relationship with. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. And Everybody got jokes and wanted to say what they wanted to say. And we never knew really what Will was doing. Jada didn't cheat on Will with August. They both was doing their own thing. Her shit just hit the fan. And that's why Will sat at that table. Mm -hmm. Like, so much shit makes sense. They were like, this nigga's a cuck. Why would he? He's with a woman that cheated on him. Because everybody likes to project their own insecurities. Mm -hmm. And the shit that they're fearful will happen to them. On to this man. But we knew from jump that they was on some open marriage shit from the beginning. If you like, if you grew up with Will like we did, we grew up on Will Smith and Jada. We we knew they had been on some open marriage shit. Mm-hmm. So when Will sat down at the red table and everybody was like, why would he sit there? And when she's talking about the entanglement, he's like, Jada, entanglement, y'all was together. He's not saying that from a place of hurt. I haven't been with this woman for the last five years. But that's my twin flame. Yeah. We working through this shit together is the reason why I come sit at that table. So to me, a lot of people look at that like, oh my God, here goes Jada again. But nah, y'all, we just learned a whole lot about what we thought. And a lot of shit is now making sense for me. 100%. I definitely feel like Will Smith and Jada Pinkett's relationship is so much, there's nothing that they can do. There's no coming back from... That I always tell my girl, like this is once you get Will and Jada, that's it. Like once you become once 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 your relationship has some bullshit out there that they can say, people don't even see y'all as a couple anymore. People just see y'all and say shit. And that's why it's like, I was telling my girl this. But then kind of not. <laughs> you know how, fellas, you know how you do some shit, and then your girl gotta do it. And this is only specific relationships. I'm not in a relationship like this, so I'm not talking about me, but I'm just saying you could be in a situation where your girl is the type to want to do the shit you do. You say that you about to start a fitness journey, all of a sudden, she's starting a fitness journey. You say you about to start doing crossword puzzles, she will start doing crossword puzzles. Fellas, let me tell you one thing. 
this could be looked at in two ways. You either see it as dope that she's, you know what I'm saying, she's down with me doing the things that I want to do, or you get irritated. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, she's trying to do everything that I'm it trying to do. It becomes like, yo, what do you want to do yeah, for you, you not that do. I don't mm -hmm. do? I'm only bringing this up to say, Will Smith just had a very successful book that he wrote before he smacked Chris Rock, believe it or not. Or was that after the smack? That was the... That was before the four. smack. Uh, Because the book did well. Believe uh -huh. it or not, mm -hmm. in that book, he talked about his life. He talked about growing up. Remember, the YouTube channel was all about the book. The book, yep. Uh, people even said that he said that he was separated from Jada since 2016 in, in that, that book. book. And I have it. And it's crazy because I'm like, damn, people, people, I guess people didn't read, read it like I thought. I'm only, I'm only bringing that up to say, now here Jada come with a book. Now Jada got to write a book. Now here come Jada with a tell-all. And now she got to talk about Tupac. She has to give her truth. And it's one of those things where as a man, it's like, all right, like, you know, you're not going to tell your girl don't get into fitness. I mean, I'm doing it. You're not going to do that. You're just going to let, let her rock. So I think with, with, with this coming back out, the wave that y'all have already created, there's no getting around it to the point where low key, I don't think it was smart to put a book out unless you're going to go full speed. You got to go stand in the middle of the traffic with that book and stop everybody. <laughs> yeah. And say, y'all want to talk about this shit? Let's talk about it. Jada, instead of calling the book this, uh, my truth or the, my word, she could have, she should have low-key called that shit the entanglement. Get on your, get on your what's the name shit and that say, shit get on your OJ shit and say, if I would have did this shit, this is how I would have did, did it. You know, because at this point, our entire careers and Not reputations mm -hmm. have come down to our personal life. This is an issue that I had about with the whole thing. Jada Pinkett. Why whenever we hear about Jada Pinkett, it's y'all relationship. Now let's keep it a hundo. With Will Smith, he just did uh, Emancipation. The yep. man just won an Oscar for King Richard. Yep. Like, my work is my work. I've been doing this. I just won an Oscar. Yeah. I just also did Emancipation and I also after just that won for the, Apple Plus. Yep. I just won the Oscar. And I won, almost won again. And almost won again. I just, you know what I'm saying? I'm working. This is not me comparing Will to, to Jada. I'm just putting in, into perspective. You know what I'm saying? Jada Pinkett, we grew up on more, I grew up on more Jada than Will. Let me say that again. I grew up on more Jada Pinkett than Will Smith. Yeah, we grew up on Fresh Prince, but who was in movies? Jason's Lyric, fucking Low Down Dirty Shame, Set It Off. Yeah. It was like. It was Jada, Jada was there. Jada was right there. And had her own name. It wasn't like I'm with the Fresh Prince. It was Jada Pinkett and then the Fresh Prince. Yeah. Menace to Society. Yeah. Jada was that girl. Why is Jada not doing that now? Why the fuck is Jada Pinkett not the Alfre Woodard of 2023? Can Jada Pinkett not go be Alfre Woodard? It ain't that she didn't have time. And when I say Alfre Woodard, go look up Crooklyn. Go look up what Alfre Woodard did later in her career. Crazy catalog. Yeah. But I just feel like we lost a lot of our black talent to them just being who they are. When you think about Jada Pinkett, do you think the actress who've been doing this shit since the 90s was in some of the most pivotal classics of the 90s and Men to Society and said it all? Or do you just think Red Table Talk and Will Smith bullshit? That's what, they, that's what it's coming come down to. And I think Will Smith has done a good job of managing his personal life right beside a successful career. No, yeah. It just seemed like, and I hate to talk about another family like this. It just seemed like his fam ain't really keep up with, yeah, with him. And and it, now it's all about drama. And his shit ended up. That shit ended up clashing. The weight of his personal life and the family shit and his career ended up clashing before the world's eyes to see. One hundred percent. And look, it comes back down to this. I feel like he was 100% in the right smacking Chris Rock. Y'all would say that he smacked Chris Rock for nothing because they weren't together. You see who I'm in, in this bitch with. Nah, but you know you what? See you see who the Let me get it on. Mm -hmm. Chris. And any nigga. What we got going on, that ain't none of your business. Feel me? That's none of, none of your business. 
You want to get up on stage and play and say shit, you thinking, see? oh, this nigga's not with her. He ain't going to say shit. He ain't going to do shit. Talk to me nice. But it's deeper than that. You see, because it's definitely this, deeper than that. Go ahead. In this book, you see, I told you, remember I told you how shit started making sense. It says, listen to this. I think every summer, all the reports would come out that me and Will were getting a divorce. And that this particular summer, Chris Rock thought that we were getting a divorce as well. So he called me and basically was like, I'd love to take you out. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, aren't you and Will getting a divorce? I was like, no, Chris, those are just rumors. He was appalled and he apologized. Let me tell y'all something. Everybody has been with your girl. Shit start getting a little rocky. You staying at your mother's house. She's staying at the crib. Y'all not really talking, but y'all know y'all still together. Mm -hmm. The world, y'all friend groups, everybody knows. Even the people that's like not really, you not really cl close with, maybe like a male friend of hers or, you know, her. Everybody know y'all together still or that that's you. A nigga saying... Aren't y'all getting a divorce? That's a different level of disrespect because we haven't even got a divorce yet. I can see if she, if 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 Chris would have said, "I thought my bad. I thought y'all were divorced." He said, "Aren't y'all getting a divorce?" So you know that's just not final. So if I'm Will Smith, y'all don't see how I would have a fucking issue with that and not like this nigga from jump. And then when you think about the fact that they decided they was never going to get a divorce, that was just rumors. And you try to talk to my wife, then you disrespect her on one occasion. I checked you about it. And then mm. when in front of my face, you're gonna disrespect her in front of me again. The nigga that tried to talk to my wife. And, you and we know that it come from the fact that she ain't talked to you because of me. Exactly. So we know why your jokes is, is where they are. Hey, that's why you got jokes. And for a year, we made Chris the victim. Damn, that was fucked up. He picked on somebody, he, he, he wanted to slap the rock. It was fucked up. He hit Chris. That's bullshit. It's just comedy. Nah, see, y'all don't be knowing everything. Yeah, that wasn't we an don't know everything. comedian that got smacked. That's this, a nigga that tried it and then tried it, and then you got exactly what you exactly. was asking. And you tried to lean back on, oh, well, it's comedy. Nah, see, all y'all niggas are funny, right. and y'all just telling jokes, but this shit was way deeper than that. Yeah. And we figured all of that out. That's why when everybody was like, oh, I wish you would just stop hearing from Jada Pinkett. Oh, here we go, Jada, Jada again. I'm like, yo, did y'all see what she said this time? Like, we just figured out the shit. We just solved the fucking shit. And that's why I said, motherfuckers, look at this shit, and they don't give a fuck no more. Now it's just what we think. Mm -hmm. Once you jaded, once your shit is Offset and Cardi B, it ain't nothing you can do. Now, look, people look at Offset. He showed nothing but love to his lady, right? Mm -hmm. But because of the allegations... Because of the bullshit with the cheating and shit like that before, mm -hmm. you see people just say shit. And it's and like making shit up now. Cardi be coming out saying, this is made. Like they were trying to say, oh, all set was high and the girl at Kyle Sinet's house. And he had to come out and be like, nigga, we had a great time. It was chill. What are y'all talking about? But you're right. Once the world look at you a certain way, mm -hmm. it's just now y'all just try and get around it. The only way you can get around it is with work. And that's why I said to me, I wish Jada Pinkett would get back to yeah. this shit. I would love to see her. The reason why I say Alfre Woodard is because remember we looked at what was the joint you loved by uh, Ava DuVernay, the short joint with uh, Gabriel Union uh, from Mew Mew, the door, the door. Mm -hmm. I would love to see it. Jada Pinkett in that queen role. Yeah, she she can do it. Somebody's mom in a movie. Somebody's lawyer. Somebody something mm -hmm. where it don't have to be so. Well, like when you remember when she did the she was in she was the uh she wasn't the penguin in, in the in Gotham. She was something else in Gotham. She was in that show Gotham. That was a big role. That was a big I remember. makeup everywhere. I'm a villain. Fuck that. Remember like, her remember her running the Matrix? Yes. And you see, even that is such a big costume role. We want, think about how well girls trip was. Uh -huh. You're not far from that. That's not bullshit. That is a that is that's what you should be. That's what we should be seeing because low key, your respect came from that. Yeah. Your respect came from we loved you in this, we loved you in that. Mm -hmm. Even Hawthorne being later in her career, her being the the I'm not a 30 year old. I'm clearly like in my 40s, 50s. Doctor, she needs to get back you to what she do. Do a Meredith Grey type, you know, 100 percent. And look for me. When it comes to these artists, when they get back to doing what we love them for, they'll always win us back. It's the reason why 
It's the reason why Kanye can wear White Lives Matter t-shirt. Kanye can come out and say whatever the fuck he wants, but everybody's still like, yo, that new Kanye on the way. Because that's why we love him. All the other bullshit that's personal, and he's pushed it. We can look past it when you're working. When you are working, you could be the most reckless motherfucker, but we're going to go see that new joint. And low key, it's kind you of could win an Oscar in the middle of all your bullshit. Yeah. You could look. Literally your mm. husband. Like, he won but, an Oscar. But that's kind of something that's also a flaw with us, too, because Kanye has said some shit that a lot of people just don't come back from. The it fact is, that bro. people are still looking forward to his album just goes to show you also how good he is at what he does. Mm -hmm. And some people, i.e. the baby, all it took was you to piss one group off and everybody turned on you and you still trying to work back from that. Kanye done pissed off black folks. He done pissed off the gays. He done pissed off Jews. He done pissed off white folks. And people still, of all of those different types, are still looking for your album. It just speaks to the art level. It does. Your art level could if be... If you can't give me the art that level, that's the thing. Your best weed man or the best dope dealer on the block, he could smack a fiend. I could smack the fiend soon as he... He could smack a fiend soon as he see him and the fiend's not going to be like, why the fuck would you smack me? For real. He might say it, but who gives a fuck? What do you want? The fiend's going to say, let me get two. Because... The shit so you're you, calling everybody crackheads. I'm saying Kanye West can these artists, the shit that they push in, some of these artists, the shit that they push in is so scared. Like we're so scarce, we're so starved for it. That like even in the world, it's sports too. We so starved for talent that we'll tolerate some bullshit. Look at the Grizzlies. If John Moran was a bench player, you think he would still be a Memphis Grizzly after all the bullshit he did? No, but talent, talent always gets you forgiven in a certain sense. That's true. That's why that a fiend can get smacked by the crack, can get smacked by the dope dealer. And it's like, I need that rock. And everybody watching, right, will do the same thing. That's why they say your weed man, that your weed man, they say the weed man that leave you on red, don't reply to you for three days. You might hit him and say, yo, I need that. He might not hit you back for three days, and you'll be like, fuck, this motherfucker hitting me back three days later. But guess what? You're pulling right the fuck You're pulling up. up. You're pulling up. And it, it, it is a, a cancer in our community, because look at Doja Cat. Doja Cat did some shit this past week that I didn't fuck with. That shirt that she wore with bro on it? You wore a shirt with a neo-Nazi on it? This motherfucker got a whole agenda about killing black people or some shit? What the fuck is the point with this? What was it? What is it? Nah, yeah, she definitely... It's like she tried... I don't know. I don't know. I don't, think she I don't really, know what that is. I don't think Doja Cat fucks with being a celebrity anymore. I think the shit happened fast, and she was fucking with the pop star shit at first. Go yeah. look at the early Doja shit. She was doing real pop star shit. Now, it just seemed like she don't fuck with it. At any chance she took, she was like, fuck that. I don't, I don't want to be this. Like, I'm not y'all. Y'all don't know me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like now she's like the demon shit. This shit is all working in the wrong way for Doja Cat. She thought better. I'm going to put on devil horns and call myself the devil. And everybody will leave me alone. That shit went number one. And that's why I'm saying like, yo, I don't know what you doing, but the, the religion thing, that's one thing. But, and, and I, this is not to be disrespectful, but like the religion thing is, is about belief. And mm -hmm. there are people who have, there's plenty of different religions out here. So it ain't that we're going to look past what you're doing, but you even got like the Sam Smiths. You got certain people out here that are making these religious challenging songs. Right. You got sexuality is a spectrum now. I get it. Cool. That yeah. people can still rock with you for doing the devil ear thing. They can just look past it. But when you start representing neo-Nazis, that's like me walking around with Hitler on my shirt and then being surprised. Not yet. Like, hold it up. It is hooked up. And this she... not about to become a thing. Doja has definitely done some bullshit in her past. Like, them chat rooms. That song didn't, didn't do nothing. Where... She got a song called Didn't Do Nothing? She got a song called Didn't Do Nothing. D-I-N-D-U. Nothing. And this didn't do is a word that the white supremacists use. Bro, you gotta look all of that shit up. Doja definitely got some shit in her past. And people look past it because the music is good. Apparently her album was pretty good. But like you said... That's the cancer in the community. Because we look past some shit that we shouldn't look past sometimes for bullshit. Same with Kanye. Kanye literally came out and praised Hitler on that podcast. Sat down with terrible people 
That last run Kanye had was crazy, bro. But guess what? All niggas are lined up for Donda 2 or whatever this is about to be. Mm -hmm. That snippet that came out with Ty Dolla Sign was all right. It wasn't that great. What I say? It was all right. I didn't know what was so great about it. Kanye went crazy, and it's like, uh, okay. Anyway, and the Kanye fans are going to eat it up. It's, it's, it's insane. You can be smacked by a dope boy for sure. In terms of new music, we got all set. Uh, project dropped today. We'll be listening to that. 100, um, 100, 100. West Side Gun is also dropping a project a lot of people are looking forward to. He got a crazy feature list too. And you know, he does his thing with the, with the production and okay, I forget yeah. what that's called. We probably check that out. Bonnie, Bad Bonnie, the Boogeyman. That's the first album I'm listening to because we probably won't do a re video for it because Terrence, he not as I wouldn't be against it. But you not as Son of me uh, me uh, Nigga start singing a Drake me uh, me uh. <laughs> That's Bonnie. You, I, you just wouldn't. I don't think you would do well. Sing a, sing a bunny song that we will all know right now. Go. Uh, TT me pregunto. The hook around. Which I know, yeah. That's the joint. Go. Yeah, we should have. We probably heard on the radio. Hey. Oh, yeah. What's another one? It's another joint. Uh, there's. Okay, so that's the biggest song from the album. Damn, what is that? This nigga trying to put his me goose. That's Death West. That's that's uh no chase together. Vamos, de la playa. That's the joint. That's the joint where he do the uh the Dominican music at the end. Hey 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 with the horns. You don't fuck with you don't you don't know. I don't, Bunny. I'm, 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 I'm green. You don't know I'm Bunny green. man. That like I'm his green. last album. We're not going to do it because this nigga's not going to be tapped in. I'm going to be enjoying myself, and this nigga, he won't. So it's Listen good. to what this tweet that I just came across, y'all. <laughs> Don't be a Will Smith. Will Smith could have easily been remembered as one of the best actors of his generation, but he will now be remembered as the poster boy for simping. Do you see... <laughs> How this is the, this is what this is what I, all I want to say. We're so detached from real art. Y'all only know love and hip hop. You can only write this from being a love and hip hop type nigga. Facts. You feel me? You're talking about another man's personal relationship. Imagine if we knew your personal relationship versus your job. Like imagine if we said you will never be on fries and you'll always be a janitor nigga. You'll never be able to move up to burgers and patties. Or you'll never be able to move up the chain at your job because of the way you treat your girl. This nigga just won an Oscar. He will 100% be remembered as one of the most prominent actors of the, of the 20th of period, century. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be national. It'll be world news. When, and all because of his woman. And look. My bad. All, all because his, all his relationship gets out. A motherfucker got a whole fucking... Look at this shit. And this is my thing. You did all of them characters on Twitter and don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're calling this man a simp. You see how we just went through the whole Will Smith shit? Yeah. He, they haven't even been together. They haven't been together. He didn't get cheated on. But guess what? You wrote this whole shit based on some shit you don't even know. And that is the world we live in today. We get an ounce of information, and now we got the whole motherfucking story. No, we don't. Somebody said he married a woman who, who, who did not love him. He knew it, but did it anyway. What the fuck are you talking about? That's just to show y'all that people just, just say research. shit. People just say shit. We got to talk to niggas about their research and not experience, and that's it these days. You niggas not talking with experience. You're talking with research. But that's my thing. Even y'all not even doing the research because you can't because there's no way for you to even know that. That's my thing. What yeah. are you talking about? You're probably 18, 19 years old. You don't know shit. You wasn't even alive. You probably was eight years old when Set It Off came out. Fuck out of here. Or younger than, a matter of fact, Set It Off came out in 96. I wasn't even that old. I was two years old. When these motherfuckers got together, I was like four or five. If you think that he's a simp because you don't like the way he moves with his lady, I ain't even going to go back and forth with you. What I don't like is exactly what he said. He could have been known as this. That is exactly how we tear our people down. Y'all can't wait to find out something about somebody successful. So when we ever we talk about them being successful, y'all want to talk about that. Facts. Think about this as an example of it. You got certain niggas, when we start talking about Martin Luther King, what they going to start talking about? 
He was fucking oh, well, white you know, he was, yeah. you know, he was foggy. You know, he, uh -huh. he fucked everybody. Who gives a fuck? Right. Your black ass can walk into the Shake Shack without getting smacked upside the head because of this motherfucker's dream. Low key. Who gives a fuck what woman... I'm sorry. This is me with sucking yeah. that upset. <laughs> Who give a fuck what, one, what women he talked to? It's just bullshit that we do because guess what it go back to, Terrell? Mm -hmm. You're a crab. Yes. You're a crab. Uh-huh. Look around you and you see wood. You're in a barrel. It goes back. Look Terrence. around you, you see wood. Terrence. This whole shit goes back to that conversation we just had about Drake. The nigga haven't lost. So guess what? Anything we can do to try and rattle this motherfucker? Because he's going, yeah, he's going to get 500K, but let's just all not like it That's collectively just, and double yeah. down. It, it's, that, it's the same shit, bro. We're gonna now, okay. So now you think we're gonna all, we're, you think we're gonna remember Will Smith for that? We're gonna re remember Will Smith for this bullshit. They did with it to Michael Jackson. They're gonna do it to uh, Beyonce. They're gonna do it to Kanye. They're gonna do it to Kanye. Mm -hmm. We do it to all of our artists. But guess what? Elvis was a disgusting ass motherfucker. But guess what? Did they put that in the movie? No. Look at what Britney Spears' crazy ass is doing weekly. Do you see them shitting on her and And you look, it's our publications that's posting that shit. Right, but then again, right. You, but you still see people posting Britney back in the day. Britney was a star. Britney was such a performer. She, they she, she fight, set the... They fight against the current for their artists. Yeah. It don't matter what they do. Woody Allen, if he make a film, go ahead. What's the name did that weird shit? Leo will only talk to girls that's 25 and under. Martin Scorsese don't like Marvel movies. We could, we could go down the spectrum of, of, of shit that they won't like, but they won't ever say Martin Scorsese could have been the great... Look. Leo could have been the greatest actor of all time, but he's a simp-ass nigga that only likes 25-year-old women. He never got married. So he'll, instead, he'll go down instead as a guy down that down just guy. only dated 25-year-olds. It's like, uh... It's only our community. Who gives a fuck? This nigga Will Smith just won an Oscar, and it got clouded with his bullshit. But let's not forget he just won a fucking Oscar. He will 100% be remembered as what you said in the, in the beginning. But that's why you can't do this shit too much, bro. Bro, you can't. You can't. Well, you can't sit on there too long. The speaking shit will piss you off. The shit will piss you off. Speaking of Twitter and, and being pissed off, whatever. I think this is a good, a good way that we can kind of flip the the joint. I'm gonna send you this tweet for you to play. All right, man. And this was on the TL yesterday, so it could be kind of frequent for some of y'all. But um, this is what I'm talking about. Is I know y'all saw the girl that was eating the uh, oysters in front of Bra. If you didn't. There was a girl who went to a, a restaurant with this dude. She ordered four plates of like 12 oysters or like four plates. Yeah, four plates of like 12 oysters and slurped 48 oysters on this date. She got two crab cakes, three drinks where she got three lemon drops, recorded the whole thing, and bruh ended up walking out on it. Go ahead, sir, play the audio. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Today, I late with this nigga I met a few weeks Listen ago out mom. with my friends. Paul. This nigga been texting me for weeks. Yeah. Duh. 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 This the type joint you get on the phone, phone you with, see the picture. You see the picture. They fine. But when you get on the phone and hear how they talk, you be like, oh, oh this gonna be yeah. a short combo. This gonna be the only combo we have. Hold on, wait. My mother calling me. Done. And I've never talked to you ever again since my mom called. Yeah. Listen, look. Y'all, so... <laughs> Today, I late with this nigga I met a few weeks ago. Pause it. My yeah. This the girl that be telling you about her day and her co-worker to get on your nerve, on her nerves? And <laughs> low-key, she don't even realize she getting on your nerves. I was just trying to beat. I'm going to keep it a hundo. I really don't give a fuck about this shit. I'm trying to play this Madden. Nah, yeah. Motherfucker, I'm trying to look through my formations. Did you hear me? I said she said. Hey, yo. Talk to this nigga that I... All right, yeah. Duh. All right, let's see what she said. This nigga been texting me for weeks talking to himself. Why I didn't block him? <laughs> Bitch, I don't know. But today I was bored and I had time, so he texted me That's like, bro. can we meet for drinks? And she, got a, she, got a, she got that, she got that southern accent. They got the accent. best fucking oysters in the land. Nah, just like, just hands down. So I'm like, Look. yes, I can get some content. Come on. It's so good. <laughs> so she's drinking the fucking oysters. Terrence, why are we watching this? What's the point? She ain't gonna say nothing. Just pause. Just, just, just end. All right, I don't want to hear her. I'm glad you're just talking to me. Baby. All right. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'm gonna get pissed off thinking about it. So, okay, so tell me what the what this is all about. What she do? Bruh ended up going to the bathroom. 
After she ordered four plates of oysters, three crab cakes, three lemon drops, Bra ends up going to the bathroom, never came back. Text her and said, you, had an, you sat up there and ordered all that food. I'll just cash out you for my half of, of, of whatever. And it was just a drink he got. Or he said, I'll cash out you whatever the food cost, but did I'm glad. And, and I hope she learned her fucking lesson. This is some of the discourse that they were talking about. People were saying he was broke and didn't want to pay. Or if you're in a situation like that, you ask a woman out, you shouldn't walk out on a tab. And the, and the conversation was about walking out on a tab. So this ain't course of action, but keeping it G, a girl tells you, uh, you go on a date with a girl and she, bro, 40 oysters. First off, I'm going to keep it a hundo. If we go on a date and you order oysters, I'm going to look at you funny regardless. Hold on, wait, T. A lot I'm of people like oysters, regardless. and I definitely want to try some because I tried some one time in Chicago. Shout out to everybody in Chicago. Oysters is I something. I tried some in Chicago, and I heard they just like good if you eat them right. Oysters is up there on, with first date foods that you should never get with burgers. You should never get oysters on a first date. Because did you see how fucking irritating she was? Slurping. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I would have been sitting across the joint like, yo, y'all got bread. I think I'm going to just do bread. Nah, yo, yeah, okay. I, I can understand that. Bro, no. You not. Look, you see, trying to let you know what that mouth like, though. Then you ate 40. 40? Nah, yeah, that's crazy. And then said, I was still hungry, so I got to eat. You brought me out. I'm going to eat. I see what game I see the games he play. Officer Hoyt, this is your training day. I'm going to the fucking bathroom and never coming back. And never coming back. Because guess what you was doing? You filling that belly up. You trying to fill up that till because you know you're not fucking with me. No bitch getting three plates of food, three drinks. You recording the whole thing, dog. I'm getting up. I'm going to the bathroom. Never coming back. Because guess she what? She gave us. Go ahead, ladies. Guess what it's giving. It, it was giving free meal. Yeah. It's giving you wanted to come out and pig the fuck out on my dollar. You don't give a fuck about me. You ordering. You don't give a fuck about me. You ordering four plates. No, yeah. That's a fact. And on top of that, she said in the beginning of the clip, this nigga was talking to himself in my DM. So I let him take me out. You was a dub from the beginning, bro. So guess what? Let her run that shit up. Mm-hmm. And I'm dipping. I'm dipping. I will leave you sitting right there, just like how bruh did. Uh -huh. And then, look, this is the conversation we need to talk about. Bruh's not wrong for not paying for that. Like, oh, yeah. People no. were like, he shouldn't have went out with her. How the fuck I know she gonna order 40 oysters like this? Now. And then trying to call him broke. Like, this girl was like, he's broke. You should never walk out on a pad, on a tab. You knew what you were getting into. No. Nah, you know. Fuck that. Nah. That's not the case, because first of all, as a woman, you should always come prepared, because you don't know if this nigga's going to be on some, some weirdo shit and not want to pay for the first date anyway. You know what I'm saying? Right. You should be prepared to pay anyway. And bruh, $15 for a dozen. And you got four. This ain't about how much it costs. You just put all of that nasty shit in your body. What is an oyster? It's a shellfish. Slurping oysters, you're gonna be can't. <laughs> and then you ate three crab cakes. I know them drinks was market price. So, and this is my thing it ain't even about how much it costs, because you're right, it's not about the money, it's the principle. I want you to have to sit there. Me walking out has nothing to do with the fact that I would have to pay for them oysters. I could pay for them oysters two, three times if, if I want to, and I'm not gonna say that bruh couldn't do that. He probably could have paid for them oysters. I want you to sit here. And look fucking dumb. Yeah. I want you to sit here, wait for me to come back, look around like where this nigga go at, then look at your phone and see that I text you, and then realize you got to pay for all this shit you just bought. All this shit you ordered, you got to pay for it now. And you thought you was on games, and that's why you're trying to make light you of it with a TikTok. On, yeah. You're trying to make it a funny thing now. You got you a viral moment. But in the, at the end of the day, you still look dumb as shit. And you look virally dumb. I don't think you got a viral Everybody, moment. Exactly. I think you look dumb. I you would go, see you did this and I'm following you, low key. Because low key, it's like, look, oh, I'm going to get content. I'm going to get some content. I'm going to get some content. Well, guess, yeah, well, guess what? Yeah, now you, you look stupid right. as shit. Please, man. Anyway, I did want to say this before we get into uh, whatever else we're going to get into. Modern Warfare 3 put out the beta, and this is some random gamer shit, but the, the beta looks fucking great. 
They put out Favela, um, Skid Row, mm-hmm. and whatever, those maps. And then tomorrow, High Rise comes out for the motherfucker that had the beta. But that shit looks dope, and I'm going to get that game. Oh, 100%. I'm just I'm saying, good. I just wanted to randomly say that. I'm about to say, what's up? Beta looks great. You been watching any of the videos? Not like that, no. When you get a chance, go look at some of the I've seen play. some of them, but I haven't wanted to watch it. Because I feel like that ruins the game for me. Motherfuckers be having all the guns already. They have the next level shit. I'm like, you know what? That made me want to play I want to stop my own joint. Like, I like when you have three guns, and then that's it. The MP5K. Yeah, you just got a M16. first starter. Yeah. <laughs> I like to watch the kill cams and figure out, oh, what was that? Oh, what was that? Then I, once I get the game, and just and I've been out there, then I start looking at the I see, we different. I go to the motherfucker that say, this is the best gun in the game right here. Before the game even Click. dropped, this yep. motherfucker got the galaxy shit. Uh huh. I just gotta get the level thirty six so I can get that. That's what I. That's <laughs> what I do. I had a um, a question for you that's kind of random that I got from another podcast. Okay, yeah. Shout out to the Playtime Podcast. Um, I got this from. It's it's kind of based on them. But look, the numbers are three, six, nine, and twelve. You hear that? Three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah. You got to complete one before you can do the next, right? Yeah. So you got to do this three times, then this six times, then this nine times, then this 12. I'm going to tell you what it is. Jerk off, eat donuts, take shots, run miles. I'm going to run the shortest. So you're going to run three miles. Yeah. And then the next thing you do, you have to do it six times. You go. You already taking the L. I'm gonna run the six miles. I'm gonna run the three miles because I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it through. So you are gonna run three miles and then okay, cool. Then next what? What was the options? Jerk off. Jerk off. Eat donuts. Take shots. So you got six, nine, and twelve. What you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take three, uh, six shots. Oh, six shots. Yeah. And then you are gonna jerk off. I'm gonna get nine nuts off. That's insane. I'm gonna get nine nuts off. I gotta get them and all. And then eat off twelve at once. donuts. I got to get them off all I want. You got to do them all before the next year. Hell yeah. You have to do them in a row. Oh, my God. I'm all right, bet. I'm t- I'm, I got to go with the jerking off first. Yeah. I'm blowing them three nuts. I'm going to blow them three. Easy. Then what? Then I'm going to I'm gonna run the six miles. Okay. And then I'm going to eat nine, nine donuts because donuts the stomach going to be full. And then I can take the 12 shots. Let me tell That's you it. This motherfucker is going to jerk off three times, and then you're going to pass out on your fifth <laughs> mile. <laughs> because, bro, that shit's too much energy. This is the only right answer I can think of. I'm going to bust them three nuts quick. This is then crazy. Gonna, sorry for the adults that I listen know, to sorry. this. Well, even though they're the ones who are exactly. getting nuts. <laughs> but, exactly. I'm going to bust them three quick because three nuts in a row is all, fellas. That third that nut third is nut nothing. Is, is, <laughs> <laughs> it ain't much. <laughs> but I got this. <laughs> that third nut, I'm getting them three out the way. Then I'm going to eat six donuts. Because I'm going to need the energy. I'm going to try to get some energy back from the calories. Okay. Then I'm going to run nine miles. Then I'm going to take the 12 shots. Then I can pass out after the 12 shots. That's a regular day for some if, people. If you was a girl, you would answer that question different. I can tell you exactly what my girl said. You would tell you? Yeah. I would run three miles because fuck running. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take six shots. I'm going to jerk off nine times. And then I'm going to eat 12 donuts. I'm like, okay, so you're going to move a donut. <laughs> yeah. But you would really do the nine? And then I had to think about it. I said, you know what? Women answer would be way different than ours. I was expecting her to say the last nuts one. Nuts for them is nothing. 12 straight nuts? A girl can get 12 nuts off. Some women can get 12 nuts off in 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Some okay. of y'all are thinking that's a long time, but low key. What, 40 minutes? 40 minutes? You get the 40 minutes like that. Nuts? Mm-hmm. Some of y'all, some of y'all, you if you get with a girl that actually can look nut. At the, next time you fuck somebody, look at the clock before y'all do it. Like and then look at random and then look after. You'll realize, damn, it's been. 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Felt like I was in that motherfucker for 10. If you get that girl that can... Never mind. Let me just shut the fuck up. Mm, yeah, exactly. Let me just shut up. <laughs> Look, your girl later, what were you getting ready to say at an hour 44? <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? 
Oh my god, I'm not gonna say shit. You know, we just you know we just reminiscing. You know, it's we just podcast we <laughs> party. <laughs> um, nothing worse when your girl won't let it fucking go. Let it go. I know. I'm not telling you. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Did you see? Um, Will Packer came out and was talking about Stomp Beyond, and one of the things he said was that everybody was mad at us because we killed Chris Brown in the beginning, but. It was never supposed to be Chris Brown's movie. Everyone just expected him to be in the whole thing. 100%. And honestly, if you go look at the trailer, they showed basically Chris Brown's whole first scene, the whole dance shit in the yeah. beginning. His, him standing on the joint. He took the hat off. But then they the showed the a brick joint. And then they showed Devin saying like, this is my brother's dream. It wasn't mine. You know, to come to college, whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. So you knew... This nigga wasn't going to be in the whole movie, but we just ignored that. We said, fuck it, Chris Brown, we're going to go see it. We were saying, we're going to go see that new Breezy That joint. new Breezy yeah. joint. Y'all went outside. Um, but he said that the movie was supposed to be, he said, the only reason we got Columbus short is because Chris Brown's character wasn't going to be um, DJ, uh, his brother. And, yeah. Chris Brown's character was going to be one of the other guys from You Got Served because Thump the Yard was originally pitched as a sequel to You Got Served. So that was supposed to be David or Elgin. And remember Columbus Short was in the movie? Yes, he was in You Got Served. He was in. The, he did the hand around the head yeah. joint. So it was supposed to be a sequel. That shit made me like... You know that just gave me a crazy rush because low-key... All right, that would have been all right. We'd have been cooking with grease because you know who would have been. You know the it would have been made. Like, it would have been made back. Oh, exactly. It would have been made back. Oh, I'm just be calling on Mari. I'm be back. Oh, it's crazy. Think about it. The dance nigga from the street dance scene goes to college. He out. Think about what Columbus Short end up doing. I out danced all these niggas because y'all can't. That y'all dance can't better dance. Than me. Y'all, oh, oh, Mari, it's a perfect, perfect. It's a perfect sequel. That would have been perfect, oh, Marion. Yep. Columbus Short we told each other, and I would have believed that he could have got Megan Good if it was Omari, y'all, because I don't already did the thing with with uh, David's sister. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Elgin sister. sister. He already was the, the ladies man. L yes. Go home, Leah. Stop acting like a hoe. And I had to hit that bitch ass nigga in his mouth. <laughs> Let me tell y'all niggas this. I was. I, I'm on record for saying this. Go to YouTube, search "You Got Served" scene. Just look at the scene where Marcus Houston, aka Elgin. Finds David, a.k.a. Omarion. <laughs> <laughs> he finds him in a joint with his sister. And he say, what I tell you about hanging out with this nigga? He said, stop acting like a hoe and go home or some shit. And, and through her, I've never seen anybody get hit with a punch like this before. <laughs> I promise you, in any movie. It was the biggest punch I've ever seen in a movie. Omarion hit this nigga. I need you to go and look at it, Chuck. Okay. Good ass. <laughs> Look at how his <laughs> neck goes. The, the sound that they use, that's the biggest punch ever. And But the weight of it also made it bigger. It probably wasn't we that We was big. in here trying to help you. And you gonna come in here for that? Hey, look. Now imagine Columbus Short, a nigga you dance with, right? Y'all came up jolly like in the same neighborhood. He's the guy that dies. Omarion is the one that goes to school, meets Megan Good. Yeah, you feel? Or imagine it's David and Elgin, and they make it to the college part, but David or Elgin got killed. Exactly. That would have been low-key great. That would have been great. It was hard for us to buy Omarion and Marcus Houston as high school niggas. I exactly. Lie. So the college thing was kind of like, all right. But damn, I did not know that. Yeah. That would have been crazy. I sent him away to say this shit on the podcast. I knew it was going to blow your mind. Let me tell y'all this. Back to the classic conversation. Would you say You Got Served was a classic? 100%. 100%. You see how you just said 100%? If you ask the film world if You Got Served is a classic, they're going to say, I don't even know what movie you're talking about because I haven't seen. I would say the movie that inspired all of the bullshit white change dance films that came after it. <laughs> right. <laughs> them All them shits that... Uh, step Up. Step Up. Uh, uh, all the bullshit that y'all done did. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't get that if you didn't have uh, You Got Served. And don't say, oh, Greece, they were dancing against each other. Fuck, Fuck out of here. Bullshit. It wasn't guess what? No, we had school days before Greece. Fat. Or did we? Or did we? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. But it wasn't no crews dancing versus this crew. And it was on some real dance shit. These motherfuckers yeah. were talking about fucking, I'm liking Stacy and she's, but y'all dance at the same time. Fuck out of here. The only reason why I bring that up is because it, just back to the classic conversation, you would call you got served a classic for what it meant to you in your life. 
But it's crazy how when you look at the film world, they would say, oh, that's not a classic. And even if they watched it now, they wouldn't get it. It wouldn't get the respect. That's yeah. why. That's true. That's why classic does go off of numbers and, and impact and all of that. But sometimes it's for the impact and numbers of a specific. No, nah, that's true. I think that's the biggest thing we uncovered with this podcast this week. Is that, is that the classic thing is really. Yeah. Classic is a term like pretty. There's no number that can say, oh, she's pretty because she has six pimples. I mean, she has six di- two dimples, 15 sh- perfectly straight teeth. Nah. No, like, yeah. there's no metric to measure. We just see it and say you're pretty. There's people who think people are pretty who yeah. some people don't think they're pretty at all. That's a fact. But yeah, that's a fact. Movie suggestion of the week. Movie suggestion of the week. My movie suggestion of the week is going to be uh, only because it's leaving Netflix. If you haven't seen it, Adam McKay's The Big Short. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's leaving in the next two weeks. Yeah. So if you have not seen The Big Short, first of all, it's a great... That movie will inspire you in a way that will make you just want to get smarter about, like... How would you explain it, bro? Because I have a trouble explaining... You've seen The Big Short, right? I saw it brief, brief, brief. It's like, first of all, if you've seen Don't Look Up, with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence that they did a couple of years ago. It's the same guy that did that. So it's in the same reign, that same pacing. And it's about like a Wall, the big Wall Street crash. It's a big crash. Wall Street movie, yeah. It's very Wolf of Wall Street-esque, but a little bit different. Where, um, what's my man's name? Ryan Gosling is kind of like narrating, like, this is what happened. It was crazy. First of all, Christian Bale performance is insane. insane. Steve Carell's in it. Uh, my guy that plays Kendall in Secession is in it. He smoked it. It's a great movie. You should watch it. It's leaving this week. My movie suggestion of the week this week is going to be Raging Bull. Martin Scorsese. We gearing up for Kendall of the Flyer Moon. After next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Yes. That's going to be, of course, my movie suggestion of the week. We going. We're going. Because it come out on the 20th. All right, bet. So, just to start, start that off, uh, Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Pesci. Mm-hmm. And you got some other people that's in, in it, Raging Bull, but um, it's one of Martin Scorsese's best movies ever. I is it say. black and white? It's in black and white. I feel like it has some color scenes, maybe towards the, in the beginning and in the end. I could be wrong, but it might be all black and white. But this is Martin Scorsese earning his respect as a filmmaker that he has now. Like, this is mm-hmm. the respect that he has now. Feels like this. This is legit. Him earning it. Did you know he do Taxi Driver? 100%. That, that, is his, that is his Forest Hills Drive type shit. Yeah. A Case Can Be Made. That's his best movie. Yeah. You know? I forgot that that was Scorsese. Man, he is a, he is a fucking dog. I should have made it Mean Streets, low key. If you want to watch a movie before Raging Bull, watch Mean Streets. Because Mean Streets came first. Yeah. Then Raging Bull. But uh, Martin Scorsese, it's on HBO Max, Raging Bull, boxing, one of the best boxing movies ever. It's a little bit of a toxic drink, too, you know? It's nah, yeah, I'm going to watch that story. drink. I was going to ask you, where was that drink at? It's on HBO? HBO Max. It ain't easy to watch, I ain't going to lie. This is early Scorsese, and it's Max now. Get with the times. You don't Max. have, man, I want no such thing as HBO Max. Oh, you're right, because Max has something else, too, right? Discovery with it? Max and Discovery combine, yeah. Damn you. NFL peak, uh, picks week six, and honestly, I want to start this by saying that my time as my time of talking shit and all of that as a as a football fan this year, y'all are gonna see me get a lot a lot more hush at least for this week because my Commanders went out there and lost forty to twenty to the Bears. We let the Bears put up forty points on us. They hadn't won in fourteen weeks. I'm going to just get on here and just give it up. Bears fans, I want to give it up to the Giants fans. Who else do I be shitting on, Terrell? Terrence, you talk Lions so fans, bad. Jaguars fans. I know some of y'all are like, say my team. All the teams that I've hated on. This is my week to feel shame. Y'all lost so bad this was to my the week. Bears. And you talked so bad about them on the, on the pod. You know what I said? I should be able to confidently say we're going to whoop their ass if we a good team. And we went out there and proved that we are a mediocre team with mediocre coaches. Our coaches in the spotlight, even before the fucking season starts, our fucking coaches just fucking up with the media. And it's just carrying on through the season. We got embarrassed. 40, 40 burger in prime time in front of our home fans. It was bad. I'm done talking. It was bad. I'm done talking. I might fuck around and pick Atlanta today. 
Now, respect from last week, got to go to the Falcons. Mm-hmm. I think I picked CJ Stroud in the beach, y'all. They went out there and got it done. Um, did you pick against my Lions? It's funny because I got so much wrong last week. Yeah. I, uh, I picked the Lions against the Panthers. Oh, okay, cool. You picked the Patriots or no? Patriots got their ass wet. Patriots I suck. picked the Patriots. Uh, I got to put respect on the Steelers. The Steelers are leading the division right now. Mm-hmm. They beat the Ravens. I thought they would. the Ravens would win. Um, respect on the Jets. I thought the Jets was going to lose to y'all. I did not think the Jets would lose to us. Honestly, we just suck so bad. I picked the Cowboys, so I put respect on the 49ers. Yeah, 100%. And then I also picked the uh, Packers, so I got to put respect on the Raiders, even though it's fuck y'all. I went five and something last week, and I don't know how, y'all. Terrence, you was picking the Bears. Why wow, I put respect shit. on the Bears. Respect on the Bears. Respect Look, I picked Bears. the Bills against the Jaguars. And, of course, they go out there and lose to the Jaguars. Of course. Respect to the Jaguars. I picked the Bills, too. I picked the Falcons. I mean, I think I... Did the I pick Texans. the Falcons? We probably both I picked the Texans because right. C.J. Stroud and them going, was going crazy. I think I picked the Texans. Mm-hmm. Shout out to whole nine watch. If you're not following whole nine watch. Titans lost. The Titans won, if I'm not mistaken. Because how the fuck am I five and Titans nine? lost. You picked the Colts? You picked the Titans? I the Titans. I told you how to pick it this now. And then Garner Minshew is the one that went out there and got it done. And then look. You I told pick- you about the Titans. Bro. The Titans are the most unpredictable squad, I swear. They are. All, All right, right bet. We starting off with a motherfucking juggernaut game. Y'all probably have already seen it. So I'm probably a little tempered by now. But for my Broncos, it's Thursday night Chiefs week. Mm-hmm. Meaning we out for blood and we going to Arrowhead. Guess what? Easy to breathe down here. It's hard to breathe a mile high. Hard to breathe a mile high. Now, let me tell you this. When you at a mile high. We have lost to these motherfuckers 12 times in a row. Since Pat Mahomes put Join. his jersey on, we have lost to the Chiefs. So I've never beat Pat. All I'm going to say is this. Don't let Pat. us win. Mm-hmm. Sorry. That's all I'm going to say. That sounds like what's name? Sound like, yeah, it sounds yeah. like we about to crank mm-hmm. that. Uh, hey, look, uh, I'm picking my Broncos tonight, even though I felt like we we're going to lose because we really just are ass. But don't let us win, KC. Don't let it happen. That's all I got. I'm going to pick the Chiefs because I'm five, I went five and nine last week and the whole nine watch thinks the gap is widening. <laughs> he so got, He got an agenda <laughs> against you. <laughs> I'm going to try to make a comeback. I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I would love to see y'all go out there and get y'all first win, though, bro. You know, the in Arrowhead, in prime time. I would love it. It ain't going to happen, it. though, but I love it. Hey, look, just don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Or y'all will never hear the end of it from me. Yeah. One o'clock on Sunday, we starting with the Ravens at Titans. I think the Ravens bounce back from their loss and get a win because I don't, the Titans, I feel like y'all going to, I don't feel like y'all going to beat Lamar and them. I think they bounce back and get a win here. I am going to go against the grain. Every time that I've picked with my, what I wanted for these 9 a.m. games. The other team seems to win. Oh, shit. I just realized it's at 9. It's in London. In London, I'm going with the Titans. Oh, we're going with UK Lamar. UK Ma. Did you see how Lamar and them looked last week? They didn't look good. I they were saying back. Lamar had fucking Costco employees catching the ball for him. And I'm like, he got Zay Flowers, y'all talking about. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. Odell's hurt. Oh, yeah, you like, got uh, Duvernay and fucking what's the other brother that I had on my fantasy and dropped? I don't even know. I forget. I'm going with the Titans with a shock against the uh, the Ravens this week. Fuck it, hold on, watch. Fuck it. Washington Commanders are going to Mercedes Benz. Big Ben, we about to be in ATL. Welcome to Atlanta Bay. Hold on, wait. Is that they say in the Mercedes Benz? Yeah. What's New Orleans? Superdome. Superdome. Okay. Um, y'all going down to Mercedes Benz? It's gonna be like real play nice. Jordan, uh, not, uh, play Jordan. Not play Taylor Heineke. Oh, Taylor squad. Heineke said, "I got this." <laughs> and if you think Taylor Heineke not giving them insight on this fucking mm-hmm. defense that we've been running the last four years, nah, no and that he it. played against in practice, I think you know they were saying that he knows was, Del Rio. Yeah. Who did they say last week was going to help so and so out with all of the? Cause he, he was knows. it Hackett? There was like somebody's gonna. Somebody went out there and lost, but somebody. Oh, uh, Trey Lance was supposed to be telling the Cowboys all about the. the, the, the yeah, it didn't go that way. 
I'm going to pick my commanders against the, the Falcons. I think we go out there and prove exactly who the fuck we are. That, te- that loss against the Bears, I don't think it defines us as a team. I just think it was a really low chin check for our coaching staff. And you know what, Falcons? This is the game that y'all can really break our backs with. If you, if you, if Falcons, if y'all send us to two and four, I think you would essentially have almost low key broken the back of our team. Because yeah. you know what they're saying, right? This is exactly what Commander's going to do. Or oh, this is what we do. We'll go lose this game to the Falcons. We're going to go and lose the next week to, it might be a bye, but then we're going to go lose to Philly. We're going to go lose again, lose again, and look, t- two and six. Y'all got New York next week. Right, look, we go lose to New York, lose to Philly. Now you're two and five. But look, now what does Ron Rivera do? We go on a six, five, six game win streak to get us back to eight and eight. Mm-hmm. And then look, another mediocre season. So look. And, and with no real draft pick. Because once you get that, once you drop down to 15, 16, 17, those players can't make the impact that you want them to make. Not know? immediate. Not immediate. That's what, they say the, that's what they say the, steal, the Steelers' curse is. Is that they won't just lose and get the top pick. So they always end up with the Kenny Pickett, George Pickens, which is good, but not enough. Good, but not enough. I'm picking y'all to win too, though. I'm picking the Commanders. Let's go. Vikings versus the Bears. I'm going to go with Jay Jettison and them boys. I think I'm going to pick the Vikings to win. I think the Bears are going to be riding on a high. They're going back home to Soldier. But you know what, Terrence? It's troubling the war in, in Minnesota. Minnesota just not looking good. And you know what's crazy? They, be, they, they have an okay squad. The defense is not good. Why are they saying that Jay Jettas might not even uh, suit up anymore? Like, apparently, they say Jay Jettas is not really fucking with Minnesota like that. Like, might want to be traded. He still need his contract. This the thing he said at the beginning of the season. I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to go out here and win games. Now you won it for. Where's my fucking money? (laughs) We're not going to win. Then y'all need to pay me what I deserve. Because guess what? We will take that motherfucker in Denver and send the house for him. Y'all can have everybody we got. Would you trade Terry for Jettis? I'd give up Dotson. I'd give up Dotson, Samuel. Would you trade Terry? Fuck no. And you about to set me up to say some shit that I don't want to say. But I, I know do. you don't know your guy. But hey, look. J- J- Terry McLaurin is better than Jay Jettis. Terrence, no. That's your guy, and I know that, and it's fine. But keep it above. Jettas has proven that he's the guy in the league. He's the best in the league right now. Bro. Yeah, he's better than Devontae. He's better than Devontae Adams. Keenan Allen. He's better than all of them. Y'all going to say Devontae Adams is better than Terry McLaurin. And guess what? On paper and with history, he is. But look at what he's doing when he's not with an elite quarterback. Look what he's doing. Right? He ain't all that elite. Devontae Adams is still balling. Amari Cooper, one of the best route runners in the league. Look where he is. Y'all got to keep it a hundo. Kirk Cousins is not a mediocre quarterback. He's a little bit above average. He's, a, he's around top 12, top 10. He is. And I feel like the Vikings have had a decent team. He had a good little thing there. Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen was the head guy before Jay Jettas. Still now balling. Look at him. Still balling. Who, Adam C. Thielen? Thielen. I got him in fantasy. He's still a threat down in Carolina. He's still a threat, but he's not looked at like we look at him anymore. And that's why sure. I say, you know what? Terry McLaurin. And this is me being a Commanders fan. I'm going to jump off of it. He's got his reputation from be- being with nothing but trash quarterback. That's a fact. I would just love to see what he would do with somebody with an he, Aaron Rodgers. To me, he got the best hands in the league. Hands down. Some of they them. They were saying that. And C- then Dot is right there. They were saying they was mad at Sherman for putting CD under Terry McLaurin. The Cowboys fan. But Cowboys fans, y'all got to keep it a buck. Cowboys fan, CD. Come on. <laughs> I'm picking the, the, the Vikings. I pick the Vikings too. I think the Vikings finally get a win. Everybody is they finally got, getting, but everybody is finally getting like their next win against the Bears. Look at us. We finally got eked out a win at zero and four. We finally eked out a win versus Chicago. You know what I'm saying? The Vikings, y'all better hope them Bears don't come in that joint hot off of our loss. You know how yeah. you fuck around and win, and then you keep winning. That's the thing. The Bears, they the, the Bears. All right, Seahawks are going to play the Bengals. Gino and them are three and one, and the Bengals seem like they got a little rhythm back with uh, Jamar. I'm actually going to pick the Bengals. I think the Bengals get another win at home. You ride on a high of a win. The Seahawks are all right, but this is going to be a big challenge for them uh, to go and play in Cincinnati. So I'm going to pick the Bengals. I'm going to go with my home away from home, the Seattle Seahawks. 
I think the Seattle Seahawks get put respect on their name with this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will. If they win. If they win. I think they put respect on their name. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. Joe Burrow, he's done me so dirty in fantasy. He had the nerve to throw three tutties last week. Oh, from your bench. You started from my bench. Started Stafford. Started Stafford against Philly because fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I said fuck it. Puka coming back. Cup. I mean, I mean Cup huh? coming back. Puka. Nuka Nuka. Ooh, I need to update my lineup. What do they call him? Puka Doncic. Puka Doncic, because he's a straight shooter. Is he a shooter? He's a catcher. But I'm going to go with the uh, Seahawks. Let's go. 49ers at Browns. The 49ers, 49ers. are 5-0. They're going to the dog pound. Miles Garrett, what you think? 49ers are going to win. The 49ers are elite on too many levels. They have an elite O-line, elite defensive line. They have elite, elite running back, elite, elite receivers. Elite, the, the, their coverage linebackers between Fred uh, Warner and I forget bruh's name. Greenlaw. Uh, Greenlaw. And if the, what's the name? The same dude that said there's an asterisk on this win because they didn't have Travis Kelsey. What's that dude? Mike Tirico? Okay. He needed chill. He was like, here we go. That's, there we go. That's Fred Warner's sidekick, Greenlaw. I said, that nigga's a beast by himself. Yeah, we'll take Greenlaw in a flash and watch. Anybody will. So I just feel, I don't feel like Deshaun Watson is going to be able to do anything with them. Deshaun, and them losing Nick Chubb was huge for their year. Nah, yeah. Y'all I mean, lost the best running back in the league. And now who's running the ball back there? Uh, De'Ernest Johnson? Oh, Ford. I got Ford on my, 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 on, my, on my bench. Hey, look. Good linebackers and a good O-line. Man, that's a recipe for a successful recipe team. Recipe for success, it is. Like, that, oh, like, we have had a bad O-line and bad linebackers for the last, what, 10 years, Washington? Mm-hmm. And when you can cut out that mid game, cut out the run game, amp up your run game, amp up your run game, it, bro. I think it seems. And your pass protection. Mm-hmm. All right, um, we both going forty nine. Mm-hmm. Bet Saints at Texans. That's gonna be a good game. Fuck. I'm picking the Saints though. CJ, y'all got a little thing bubbling in te- in, with the Texans, but I'm gonna pick the Saints because that defense. I'm gonna pick the Saints. I'm picking the Saints. Colts at Jaguars. Jaguars. Let me tell you something, Jaguars. I feel like I'm gonna pick the Jaguars for watch. They watch. They gonna go out there and lose. They're gonna go out there and lose. But I'm gonna pick the Jaguars to win. I'm pick the Jaguars. It's in Jacksonville. Hopefully y'all Duval shows up. Where's my, my boy Brett? Brett, come on, bro. Talk, go down there and talk some sense into him, bro. Cause this shit is this shit. Y'all look good though. Y'all good. Y'all three and two. But y'all just a scary ass fucking team. Uh, Panthers at Dolphins. Dolphins. That, damn, the Panthers about to be 0 and 6. Are they the worst team in the league? And then they have like one of the number one, number two or number three pick last year? They got Bryce Young. Number one. And they should have got they that people saying they should have got CJ. Because CJ looked better, but damn. But that that, that Panthers team is probably sucks though. Yeah, that's you know? what they saying. It's not all on Bryce, because I mean they like CJ Stroud got some ballers over there. What's he so got a running back? Damian Pierce. Yeah, he got some people on that team. But, but if you look at that Carolina roster, they got some. They no got bullshit. Some no bullshit. They, they do. They got, they, got they, got more, they got more pieces. Yes, they got yeah. Miles Sanders. Thielen went down there. I don't it's know. just. Dolphins. But uh, I'm picking the Dolphins. Patriots at Raiders. I'm picking the Raiders. I'm the picking Patriots. the Raiders. The, yeah. The Raiders like, defense looks insane. Max Crosby. He looks like a beast. He is we'll, a beast, we'll take Max Crosby in Washington. They were talking about how he people are, are afraid to put him in the top five D line in the league, but I would put him in the top five D line in the league. He's a beast, and I know that's big to say. There's a lot of people out there, you know. There's what, whatever, but he's been holding that team. I want to pick the Raiders too. Lions at Buccaneers. I'm gonna pick the Lions. Here we go. I really don't have that much faith in the three and one Buccaneers. The Lions are supposed to be this gritty playoff team. Y'all should go out there and win this game, right, Lions? Mm-hmm. Let's get it. I'm going to go Lions, too, of course. I think they're a better squad. Cardinals at Rams is going to be good. That's um, a rivalry. Yep. Uh, because what's his name? Josh Dobbs? Not Josh Dobbs. What's his name? Dobbs. Dobbs. He's been, he's been a baller a little bit. They just be losing. You know what I'm saying? But they, they know how to put points up. But with cutback, I'm going with the Rams. He had a bucket. The Rams are such a team that, like, you don't want to pick them. I know. I'm going to pick the. I'm going to pick the Rams. Pick the Rams? Pick the Rams. And then, all right, bet. We got Eagles at Jets. I'm going to just pick the. I feel like the Eagles are going to eke another one out. 
You had the Eagles be like in a close game and then they win. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is going to be one of them because that Jets defense is solid. The Jets defense is solid, but I don't have any faith in that Jets offense versus the Eagles. Yeah. I'm going to pick the Eagles. I'm picking the Eagles too. Sunday night football, we got the New York football Giants going to play the New York Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. You know, battle at the home, in the home state. Um, I'm going to pick the Bills. I think the worst team in the league right now is the New York Giants. You can't say that when the Panthers are 0-5. New York Giants, y'all just paid somebody $160, and now y'all don't know what the fuck is A million. Going. <laughs> I said $160. But you know what I mean? Like, nah, yeah. y'all are the worst team in the league, low-key. Like, what's the fucking <laughs> excuse at this point? Hold up. Saquon is hurt, and he's the heart Every and Every fucking year is the same <laughs> he's thing. The the Giants. He's the heart and soul of the team. Every year is the same thing. Well, when we get Saquon back. Terrence, Saquon coming back this week. Saquon comes back this week. Go to your Twitter right now and search Saquon. I got him on my fantasy, bro. And he was about to play last week, but they, he was a game time decision. I'm about to tell you right now. He about to see a big red O by Saquon Barkley name. Now I know that'd be the worst. Oh, also y'all whooped Terrence's ass in fantasy last week. He did. 129 to 72. I was getting ready to send you the, uh, the clip. Hold on, I'm about to play the clip that I was getting ready to send you. I'm going to play it for everybody here. Because... <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Tap it. Tap it. Shit. Nice speaking that ass, dog. Now get stepping. Nice speaking that ass, dog. Now get stepping. Whoop his ass. And I think I'm two and three now. My fantasy team is cooked. The Miles, the 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 Aaron Rodgers injury killed my Garrett Wilson. Ramondre Stevenson is not what I thought because now Zeke is splitting carries and looking great. Fucking Barkley is still uh, questionable. They said, I'm gonna pick, the pick the Bills. I'm gonna still pick the Bills. Mm -hmm. Hold on, watch. I'm picking the Bills. But if Saquon Barkley plays, I'm picking the Giants. What? Yes, I am. The Giants are trash also because of their coaches. Like the the, the choices that y'all be making. Whatever. Nah, yeah, coaching is definitely an opportunity for them too. Monday Night Football. America's team, Dallas Cowboys, going to play the L.A. Chargers. I'm going to actually give this win to the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys bounce back. That defense is going to be tough. Um, We've done this before. They're going to have something to prove coming back. You see how Michael was talking? Mm -hmm. and he looked bad, too. Debo made him look worse because he was like, yo, y'all wanted to play y'all want to play rough. Now it's personal. And Debo was like, it's always been personal. We dubbed y'all. It's about to be worse next time type shit. I think they're going to go out there with that anger and they're going to Every sports analyst was saying the same thing to Micah Parsons. Oh, now it's personal. It should have been personal when you were on that football field. Yeah. And you did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, you he know? got stuffed up. And they said he was running from Trent. Nah, they put him on Trent, and he got nothing. They, people were saying he should have lined up on the other side. For real. They lined I him up. I saw a clip of him on the other side of Trent, and this dude was like, why he not on Trent? What is he doing? Because, look, because they had him on Trent all game, and it was not working, bro. This Dang. nigga Trent Williams is a first ballot Hall of Fame. First ballot. He's Washington. You think he's going to retire with y'all? He's going to retire? The place hey, fuck that, that you put your best years in with us. Y'all almost cost this man his life. You're right. <laughs> y'all are a nightmare. Hey, Trent. <laughs> you looking at him like the... He didn't uh, say shit. You looking at him like the Kevin James meme? <laughs> he had some good years here. <laughs> hey, I'm actually going to pick the Cowboys because also the Chargers fans... Eckler's out. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm picking the Cowboys because I feel like the Cowboys fans are about to fill up so far. You know how they say all Chargers games are away? Mm -hmm. I, feel like, I, I feel like the Cowboys fans are going to flood that, that stadium. The team is going to be on fire. I'm picking the Cowboys. But I would actually like to see the Chargers go out there and win, even though it's always fuck y'all. So I think that last win against the Cowboys for the 49ers was a backbreaker. You think the Cowboys probably going to lose losing streak? Yeah. For real. I think with all of that talent. Think about I was telling Terrell, who the fuck did the Cowboys have to throw to for real? Terrell was like Michael Gallup and CD Lamb. CD Gallup and Cooks. And Cooks has it. Cooks, Brandon Cooks looks like how everybody that wasn't excited about Brandon Cooks going there thought it was going to look. Y'all, they were like, right, Brandon Cooks, he, he still got some speed in him. He's, everybody was like, Brandon Cooks from the Texans that ain't really been doing shit. Imagine Dak Prescott had Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, and Jahan Dotson to throw to instead of them bums. Mm -hmm. Anyway. 
But look, niggas are gonna say we ain't got a good retweet. They still got CD though. CD is pretty much all they got to throw to. I put respect on CD name. I will. I'm gonna pick the Chargers for that Sunday night game. I mean, so that Monday night game. I don't see the Cowboys winning. I think it was a backbreaker against the 49ers. I think they're going to win against the teams they need to win against, like yes. us. Mm -hmm. But the Chargers, the Chargers are looking to turn their season around, too. You know, they're they looking to be, be something better no than bullshit. Yeah. You see what what's the name said? Not Bosa. Is it Nick Bosa that plays for the Chargers? Joey. Okay, yeah. Nick plays for San Fran. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm mixing them up. But he was like, before the season started, he was like, I want to win. Like, we should, we're in a position where we can win. What's the excuse at the end of this year? They got the O-line. They had a, they got running backs, receivers, even though they had a receiver go out for the year, running back injured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing. Once, the, once That's why when we make these projections early, it's kind of like what it is. But, like, once injuries set in, then yeah. shit changed. Yeah. But, you picking the, so you picking the Chargers? Picking the Chargers. Of course you are. You're not going to pick the Cowboys. I picked the Cowboys last week against the 49ers. That's why I did so bad. Oh, damn. Yeah, you did. Thinking that they was going to pull off the upset. But that's going to wrap it up for 171. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we had a good talk, good talk this week. Good talk. 100. Make sure y'all put your thoughts in the comments about a lot of the stuff we talked to, uh, we talked about. Hit the subscribe button. It's time.